another minute or so and we'll get this thing rolling. How's everybody doing? And I hope we don't have to deal with ner Nerf bolts today. Need a lock on the door. You're asking for it. All right, hey guys. Hello, Pakistan and Mexico. How are you guys doing? How's everybody doing Friday? This Friday, how's everybody doing this Friday? Not everybody doing Friday. Obviously, I'm on the ball, so, you know, that's where I'm at. It's actually been insanely hot here. Well, for here, I've been in the mid to upper 90s for the better part of a week, and it's toasty, so. Looking forward to maybe, you know, sitting in a nice air-conditioned office and <laughs> hanging out with SketchUp. So how's everybody doing? Got a couple hellos. Albania, that's awesome. Pretty cool how many people we have from uh, all over the place here. Ireland, thunder and rain. You know, we've been having, in Colorado, it's generally dry. We're considered desert. We're high desert, technically due to the rainfall that we don't get. <laughs> so it's really pretty dry. But lately we've been getting rain, but it doesn't seem to be enough to cool anything off. It actually just makes everything a little more humid. So it's, it's, been, it's been something. It's really been something. So uh, Montreal, very hot and humid here too. Denmark, time for SketchUp Live. What time is it in Denmark, Gamborg? I'd imagine uh, Iran and India. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Um, so I'm just going to address it outright. Matt is gone, gone. He's moved. He's in Michigan. Um, and I can't come up with another excuse to bring him back. So uh, he has, uh, may, he may join us on the stream. So we may see Matt show up here. That, that would be nice. But uh, we do have Michelle joining us on Hello, comments. Everyone. So if I forget to pay attention to what you guys are saying to me, she will be here to remind me. <laughs> <laughs> she no. has the, the poking stick. I'm not as, uh, as witty as Matt, but I'll do my best. All right. We'll, we'll, take, we'll take what we can get. We're on this show. We're... <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> we Thanks. Take it, we Thanks take a lot, it. Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> I meant that in a good way. That. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So... Uh, we're going to get rolling. Um, I think I said India. Hi. Um, Matt is, he is actually leaving Trimble as well. He's, uh, like I said, he moved for personal reasons, be closer to family, which we're fully, fully support. That's, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, he's, uh, he's going to move on to better, brighter things. So we look forward to seeing and hearing from occasionally, but, uh, yeah, well, uh, hold on. I have to address a very important question. Okay. Declan asked if I was a good shot with a Nerf gun. And I have to say, when I can get the Nerf gun functioning as it should, I am killer. But I really am bad at getting the function of the Nerf gun to actually <laughs> propel in the way that it was meant. And uh, I don't know if that's just because I didn't grow up with brothers, but. I have some learning to do. All right. Well, I'll, I'll have uh, Michelle keep an eye on the door. See, the problem is that Matt usually knew they were coming in. <laughs> so <laughs> it doesn't matter how good Michelle is because <laughs> I got no support. I'm, I I'm sitting here blind. I don't know if you know this, but I may have been behind some of those experiences <sighs> well, or at uh, least encouraged other people's ideas. Of okay. Such. Yeah. I guess it, 
what's good for uh, social media is Aaron getting shot. <laughs> so as long as you're straightforward about don't oh, be so dramatic, Aaron. <laughs> Sorry, getting shot at. <laughs> I get. Well, I do have to say this. Considering that the firing squad was all of eight feet away, I'd say only <laughs> one in six shots actually hit me. So that math is a total <laughs> guess. It's not even close to accurate. <laughs> well, I picked up afterwards, and there was a lot of bullets <laughs> on the ground, and and I don't remember getting hit that often. Yeah. It's because you block out trauma. We all. That's true. It. That's true. All right. So. Let's do this. Um, so we are going to, we had a lot, not just last week, but the last few weeks, we've had a recommendation of, or request to model a helicopter. Um, unfortunately, saying model a helicopter is kind of like saying model a car or a building. There's a lot of helicopter, which I didn't realize. I mean, you know, I think about helicopters, I think about one or two things in my head, but it turns out there's a whole lot of companies making helicopters. Um, so they're all over the place. So I was going some, <laughs> initially I was like, I'll ask you guys, you guys tell me, what should I model? But before everybody floods the comments, um, I wanted to make sure I could find something that I could find a decent, uh, fairly clean reference image off of. So I started thinking of uh, basically, what are some different helicopters that I've known and have seen uh, throughout the years and what were some, you know, ones that people would recognize. So I did have a couple that I thought would be kind of cool. Some of them are recognized from like uh, war movies and, and that kind of stuff. But the one that I came back to, the one that I was, was most stoked about was, boom, TC's helicopter from the old Magnum PI TV show. Oh yeah. Right? That's, that's good, right? Everybody's good with that? <laughs> yeah, Airwolf was one that came across my mind, Declan. Um, <laughs> But this one seemed a little bit more doable in the time we have. Oh, yep. Schwartz Stitch just said that there's a helicopter flying over his house right now. So oh. that, that to me says I made the right decision. Yeah, meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who aren't aware, there was a show called Magnum P.I. before the one that's on right now with a mustache attached to a man named Tom Selleck. And he was... A guy in Hawaii who was a private investigator, and his friend TC sometimes flew him around in this helicopter. So, if you could get a more dated color scheme, but this is like this is good now, right? This is retro, some orange and brown and yellow stripes. Um, so yeah, so this is what we're gonna shoot for. Um, I did again. I tried to go and take a look for some reference photos, and there's a lot of reference photos, which is cool. Um, so we can look at, there are different, so those of you who don't know, it is a Hughes MD500 course, um, helicopter, but there's actually variants of that because there's the MD500M versus E versus, I don't know. So I will be honest, this may end up being something of a hybrid or a unique version <laughs> of a helicopter. but. You guys should not be surprised if I go there. Um, greatest mustache that ever lived. He did. That's really the way it was. Um, yes, and Michelle, Michelle just put a post up. But yes, this stream will be live in its entirety on YouTube. So if you do have to drop out, you can come back and pick up wherever you had to drop off at. It'll also stay live on Twitch for about two weeks. And uh, it'll be in your stream on Facebook. But eventually, you know, that... It'll still be there. It'll just be harder to find as time goes by. YouTube's a place to check it out. It'll be on our channel. You can come grab it anytime. Hello from Montreal. Unique things is what we specialize in here at SketchUp Live, Orange Girl. So, which I know, I know you know that, but just had to comment on that comment. All right. So, having said all those things I just said, let's let's get into SketchUp and do something. All right. We're doing stuff. We're doing stuff. All right, let's hop in here. Let's start with a reference photo. Hello from London, SketchUp artist. Hey, Christopher. Well, everybody's showing up. Good thing it didn't get started right away. Chuh, eight minutes late, come on, guys. Is everybody else not working today, <laughs> too? <laughs> well, that's the theme. I like it. I'm technically working right now. <laughs> 
I just really enjoy this. Yeah. It's questionable whether or not I'm working right now. <laughs> That's right. CBD. Angola. Welcome back, Seraphin. Um, okay, so I'm going to start by importing a reference photo, a reference image. It's not a photo. It's actually an illustration of the helicopter. And I was able to find this. I really, I just searched for that, the MD500, and I found this. So I'm going to go ahead and import this file. And I'm going to import it as an image. And I'm going to make it biggish. Um, I'm going to check something real quick. I'm going to go to my preferences. I know, I got my T Rex arms going on again. <laughs> I don't know how to make that better. It's so awkward, but I don't know what else to do. Uh, in real life, they look a lot longer than this. Like normal, almost normal size. <laughs> almost normal size. Um, all right, I was making sure that you use maximum texture sizes on so I get the, the best possible image here. I'm going to go ahead and stand it up. And I thought we would do something fun, something we don't do here, we being me, me don't do, is let's model this in full size. Can somebody find me the full length of an MD-500 helicopter? Who, who's got that information on them? First ones to answer gets to answer first. There's your prize, go! <laughs> Truly motivating. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Nathan, I love the idea of rendering, and I do like playing with both Scatter and V-Ray. Um, Dave K comes back with 9.4 meters. All right, so the length of the helicopter. All right, so I got this, ah, uh, there you go, thanks Dave. 30 foot 10 inches, that <laughs> works way better for me. Let's do just that. That makes more sense. <laughs> In American excuse, units. Yeah, if you have to excuse Whoa, look at that. American. I got it at 30 foot 11 right now. Not too bad. So I'm gonna use my tape measure to go across that line and I'm gonna type 30 foot 10. You wanna resize the model? Yes. All right, so that was only a small step down. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna check something. I'm gonna grab Mark here, put him up against Hmm. I wonder if that dimension is like, that's the length of the rotator. All right, yeah, because that didn't seem quite right. Um, rotor diameter. Oh, that's from the end of the rotor. to. The, so that's like, we're talking 30 foot 10 from here to here maybe? Well, here, what was the... Rotor dimension is 26.4. Let's, let's do that one. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and try that. 26 foot 4. Ah, that looks a little more realistic. That looks right. Mark looks like he could actually climb in that helicopter. <laughs> Stick, stick a mark back over here out of the way. All right, so I'm going to say that is full size. Cool. Now we got to think about how to model this thing. Uh, let's see here. So um, I know, I know, I, I get it. I, I fully understand people defending metric, and I'm not <laughs> opposed to you. I'm not going to get all American here and talk Imperial or whatever. We are the ones who should be switching over. Absolutely. I get it. I've, I, my, <laughs> my whole thing is I've been using Imperial units for my entire life. And while metric is a whole lot easier to use because everything's in increments of 10, it's a great system. I really honestly feel that way. <laughs> I love it. But I have no frame of reference for it. Like I know that uh, a meter is about three feet ish, but I have no concept when somebody says something like it's 34 millimeters. I'm like, I don't know. That means nothing. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> so I am full on 
in support of the metric system. I'm just incapable of properly utilizing it. Um, I, I think Imperial is, it's kind of crazy. I mean, we have a thing called a foot, which is divided into 12 increments called inches. <laughs> and then we'll take those inches and we'll divide them into whatever fraction feels good at the time. Sixteenths, thirty seconds, sixty fourths, quarters. Deep Ugh. <laughs> Great, now I'm going to get all the angry Imperial units yes, people. You are. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, it's a good system. I, I personally can't use it. All right. He can, he just chooses. I, I choose not to understand. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I'm at. All right. Um, ooh, is everything still working? I just got an offline message. Oh, it, you're still Let's streaming. Let's see if it picks back up. All right. I might, might drop for a second there. All right. I'm thinking, here's my thought. I think I'm going to start with the body here. Um, I think I'm going to mock up, I'm going to try to use as much like native SketchUp as I possibly can. I'm going to use extension sooner or later, but I want to start by just as much as possible making this with just SketchUp. So I'm going to see where that goes. Um, so I'm going to start, let's see here, a little line right here, I'm drawing top, and I'm kind of thinking... I draw this straight across, no, something like that. And I know I said I'm not using extensions, but I'm gonna use an extension that is from SketchUp. Loophole! Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna to go to draw, and I'm gonna use my Bezier curve. Click from here to here. And Bezier curve is different. If you have not used this before, it is different from the curve that, uh, the standard curve because I actually have handles at both sides so I can create an uneven curve. The standard curve that you create with a SketchUp tool is the same. It's always the, uh, it's a uniform curve. So I'm pull up like this on this side and then maybe something like that on that side. We'll do the same thing down here. in here and smooth this out a little bit. All right, that's going to be my profile of the body of this uh, helicopter. Okay, what now? All right, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to make it a group. Um, just so I don't end up losing any geometry or anything like that. So I'll grab that group and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to grab it by the tallest point. Throw that tallest point right here in the middle of this drawing. So we have an interesting question. All right. Can you use the follow me tool with top view profile? Yes, we could do something like that. I think the, the biggest issue with this is going to be that this is not, I don't see anywhere where this, this shape doesn't change. It's, it's not uniform. I mean, it's uniform in that the left and the right are the same. So it, it does actually mirror itself pretty well, but like, Looking at it from here, I have kind of a smoothed off square. It's not, it's not like a, it's not a full arc. It almost goes straight here on the side. In the front, same thing. I kind of go to almost straight back here, but it tapers. Um, so I don't know if I would be able to use follow me very well on this particular profile. So I'm going to, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to start by I'm gonna just get a couple arcs in here to get my profiles built first. Um, talking about just the water, just this teardrop shape. Um, I could make it uniform. Let me think. Yeah, I think I'd end up with kind of a mess. We can, we can try, you know, we're not above that. We, we like trying stuff. Um, so let me, 
Let me get a couple pieces roughed out here. Be really smart to ask Aaron to try it so you don't have to do it yourself. I'm yeah, there you go. Okay, just let Aaron <laughs> try it for you, and then he can decide. <laughs> then you don't have to worry about it. And better off, let's make sure I try it while I'm uh, live streaming to a few hundred people. Because <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? All right, I'm going to break this arc into three pieces, and I'm going to do my bezier again from here to here. I'm going to come off straight this way, and then almost but not quite vertical here. Something like that. Here to here. I can pull tangent to that last line this way, and then same thing, kind of not quite straight here. Click here to here. My top one, I'm going to pull tangent to that first line. And on the bottom one, I'm going to go to uh, red axes like that. All right, so that right there. is my widest profile. So I'm gonna grab that, make that a group as well. All right, I'm getting there, I'm making a thing. Um, one more, so let's, let's turn this around this way and then we'll turn it vertical. And I will throw this right here from above, and make one more set of arcs. I'm going to pull one out to about here, and then I'm going to make all that one one more. Yeah, that'll all be one arc. So draw another bezier curve from the tip right here down to here. Pull it out. Again, red axes, that just means when I'm going on the red axes, it's going to keep me from getting like a point out on the tip this way because that means the two arcs on either side when I copy them are going to come together going directly this direction or close to it. So I should get a smooth arc on the front there. And here, I'm going to bring it down to, again, almost blue axes but not quite. And then one more, click here, click here, come out to tangent, and I'm going to pull it out. It's a long arc, so I'm going to pull it out a little ways. And then this one's going to come back. I actually do want a little bit of a point on this one, so pull it out kind of like that. All right, I'll grab that again. Flip it around, erase the line in between, and grab that group. Oh, I didn't quite line up there, did I? Actually, I'm noticing this about this drawing. These three pieces aren't so much to scale. <laughs> So I'm going to grab this. It's pretty close vertically, but horizontally, definitely not right. So I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to hit scale, and scale about the middle, back to here. And make that a group also. All right, so there we have our, uh, yeah, so Pretty simple from here, right? Boom, pretty much done. Just throw a rotor on it and fly her away. Pretty much done. Yeah, so That's how physics works. <laughs> here's a spot that we could actually, now we can start playing with this because again, I haven't really figured out exactly how this is going to uh, work. Hey, I like, the, I like the way you think. I'm gonna go save. <laughs> I was gonna say it and then I was like, nah. It's um, Josh Riley, if you're out there, we're channeling you. Helicopter save, and save. save. save, save, save That's save, right. Save. I uh, was I did tell Josh about Notre Dame when I modeled Notre Dame, Notre Dame. Sorry, my, my English accent showed another, up. My American accent showed American up there. Another American faux pas. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when we modeled Notre Dame, I the first hour that I modeled, I didn't save and I lost it. <laughs> so it was kind of fun because I did a little speed model. I made up for that last hour in about the first 20 minutes of the second try. But, uh, yeah. That was something. <laughs> uh, Christopher Ryan, I am just using the SketchUp uh, Bezier Curve, just that default one, the simple one. Um, I do like 
uh, some of the other ones. For, I, I, and for whatever reason, I don't use it very often, but I know with Fredo's curve, with Fre I think it's Fredo curve, you can actually go in and manipulate the curve afterwards, the handle will come back, whereas the, this one just puts it out as a curve and you're done. Um, yeah, <laughs> Ian's, Ian's saying there was an opportunity to look back and laugh. <sighs> it was fun, we have fun. Okay, anyhow. <laughs> Pain is glory. <laughs> That's right. Other people's pain is a great way to learn. <laughs> um, so I'm looking at this, and I like this, what we got so far. And I did say I wanted to stay in native tools as much as possible, and I may have gotten as far as I want to go in native tools at this point. Um, one of the things I was thinking about, and I've seen people do this. I haven't done it much myself, but we're here to learn, right? Something like that? Something like that. What could happen here... I'm gonna option copy this over. I'm gonna say this is gonna be my, uh, my go back to group, my backup. Um, what I could do here is, like I said, I've seen people do this. I could create kind of a shell here. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna make. I don't think I'm going to go the full way, but I could make a uh, kind of a skeleton, right? I could take this shape, scoot it to these lines, and that at each of them, I could scale it about the center to that point. I can scale it about the center. I didn't put a line there to snap to. I put a line both directions. One that way. One this way. And then I could scale that again. Modifier key is scale to a point. And I could work my way up like this. This is what I'm thinking I one could do. <laughs> huh? I wasn't real careful about my the number of pieces in my arcs either. So uh, I might not have the perfect uh, lineup here. I could have made sure, I could have broken this at points and made sure that there's the same number of segments on this arc as it was on this arc. I didn't do that. Um, so I grab this, scale that. Again, option key. Grab this one, scale. Scale. And I could do this sort of thing. Lines up. Nader says, great job. And you know what? I have to agree. Great job. Oh, hey, thanks, guys. Yeah. This is kind of cool. Um, I'll come back and clean up the bottom in just a second. I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run with this for a couple minutes. I want to see where this goes. Oh, boy. I I'm curious. Brace yourselves. <laughs> I have no idea how this is going to turn out. <laughs> if I cry, it's my own fault. <laughs> no one's making you do this but you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's... I bring everything I do on myself. It's, I'm, I'm willing to take responsibility for what I do, usually. Um, all right, a couple more. Scale, every time I'm doing this, I am scaling about the middle, even though I'm gonna come back. This is not, it's not uniform top to bottom, but uh, it's just a start, it'll be a little bit quicker to See the bottom. I could actually just scale straight down because I'm going to have to come with the bottom and follow a different curve, but I'm going to go ahead and do that just because I want to. Whoa. Ooh. What? I hit my modifier key and got on a weird, weird angle, man. It's getting weird. <laughs> it, got, it got real weird there for a second. <laughs> All right, bring that down. All right, two more. Some more first. measurements coming through here, and I think I understand about four of those words. Uh oh. <laughs> Let's see. What Although I bet they're helpful to you. There's some rotor diameters and All right. skid diameter. No, width. I don't know. 
numbers and stuff. Guys, math is not my strong suit. <laughs> That's fair. Um, is it? I'm just because I'm in the same boat. Oh, math. You guys, you guys already know how I feel about math. <laughs> All right, bring that back. All right, almost there. It's surprising how much math you do have to do. And, and you remember when you used to say, "When am I going to use this in my real life?" Like yeah. every day, actually. Turns out teachers knew what they were talking Unfortunately, about. Unfortunately, they were right. <laughs> All right, one more here. All right, and the last one, I'm just going to pull this down. A little cleanup on the bottom. I actually didn't draw lines down here either, but see if I can use, just use inferencing snapping to get close enough. All right. So this is going okay. Well, it's, not, it's not the coolest thing in the world, but... Uh, I think that's all right. Um, one more. It's like a blimp. <laughs> it's a, it's a really nice blimp. I'm proud of you. Oh, thanks. Yeah. That's kind of cool. All right. So, I uh, like I said, this was an experiment. Let me show you why. This may not be the preferred. Yes, you were right. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Want more? Um, Declan Dolan <laughs> just pointed out that the Hughes 500D entered the commercial market in 1977 with a new five-bladed rotor system. The original image that I had actually was that specific one, which was the one that was in Magnum PI. Um, but the image I had was so low quality that if you zoomed in anything past about here, it got real blurry. So I ended up opting for this, which is the MD500 something else. Um, but it was a better image to work off of. So again, we wing it. We do, we do our thing here. Um, but yes, the original one and the one in, that was in there did have uh, uh, five rotors. Um, yes, ANA pointed out uh, we could start with a sphere and start deforming it. That was actually something else I was thinking about doing. Um, but it would take a little bit more than, I certainly couldn't do that with native tools. Well, I could. <laughs> All right, too many ways to do this. Let me, <laughs> let, let me work my way through. Uh, just showing how I would go about this fully native tools, and then we'll come back to some of that other stuff. I'm not going to follow this all the way through because it's going to end up taking a whole lot of hand stitching, which you guys don't want to sit and watch me do, but I'm going to go ahead and just show you in this. So I'm going to explode all these groups, and then the way I would go about this would be to, I'm going to delete this so I get lines like that, and then what I would end up doing is coming through here, and I could do this by hand, um, or I could use some kind of a lofting tool to take these two together, but if we were full on committed to using no uh, extensions whatsoever, this could actually happen. Um, another option, a way smarter way to do it now that I think about it. <laughs> Drum roll, please. <laughs> would be to, uh, to actually do this with push-pulled surfaces. So what I could do, so you can see that's, that's what I could do. I could come through here and just wrap that around and then smooth it all out and you could actually build that up. I mean, it wouldn't be fun, but it wouldn't be pain, it wouldn't be terrible. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be like, Horrible. And if you like stitching, like I said, there's there's something oddly satisfying about it for me. Maybe it's like the whole reason people do cross stitching or whatever. Um, I really kind of enjoy and feel like you know it's 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 relaxing to me to go through and do that. Um, but if we back up a few dozen steps, oh, Christopher Ryan nails it. Oh boy. More. It's just ahead of you, man. More, more undoes, more undoes. Uh, uh, okay. Um, I have to get my lines back in here real quick. 
Anybody got any big plans for the weekend? <laughs> Everybody just trying to stay cool? Is that, the, is that the goal for everyone else too? Definitely for me, for sure. Today in Boulder, Colorado was tube to work day and I did not officially participate, but I wish I had because when I was driving to work today, it was 88 degrees at eight in the morning. Perfect day for tube to work day. That seems a little unnecessary <laughs> weather-wise. Um, I drew up. I drew my lines a little, a little haywire here. Whoa! Excuse me. Pardon me. Some of these lines got a little, little out of control. All right. So yes, what I could do is I could take this shape right here. I could push pull from here out to this one right here. I'm back up. I'm gonna grab all of this and weld it first. That way I won't get any seam lines. All right, I'm gonna take that and pull it out to here. Now take just the face. This is, really, this is a really cool way to do it. I'm gonna grab just the face and I'm gonna use scale on there and scale that top down. I'm gonna scale the sides out uh, around the middle. So I'm gonna hit the modifier key to pull it out to the edge. And the bottom, I'm gonna scale up. Ooh, Triscoll's asking if next week you can model the Tesla Model 3. That's something worth considering. <laughs> we will, as always, throw it on the list. Yeah. So yeah, if you guys have any ideas, uh, always throw them out in the chat. And we do have a running list of all these ideas. Some of them, I mean, like literally, Everything anybody's ever yelled out, um, well, most of what people have yelled out <laughs> are on there, even though some of them, I mean, there's some that are very, very specific and unfortunately may never actually get made, but we still put them on the list. All right, I'm gonna grab this shape again, the face, just the face, scale that up. All right, like that. Now, I can grab this face, push, pull again, take it out to the next increment. Grab the face again, scale, pull this one down, pull the sides in, pull the bottom up. And you can see this, this actually is not a bad way to do it. One of the things that's happening here, just so you guys know, we are taking that same kind of rounded square shape right here and just bringing it down in size. What's not happening is this arc right here is not changing as we go. So what may happen is when we get it all the way down there, it may end up looking a little blocky because these creases are gonna kind of come down the front like that. Um, so, but we'll see. I'll, we'll go ahead and do, we'll, I'm, a, I'm willing to dedicate a couple minutes to this process. I'm, I'm excited to see what happens. Let's see what he does. <laughs> Somebody just suggested the bubble ship from Oblivion. Obviously, you're not a Tom Cruise fan. <laughs> I, uh, Speaking of Tom Cruise fan, who watched the uh, commercial for the new Top Gun? What? No. Yeah, so when we break today, you need to spend that break <laughs> watching the commercial, the trailer for the new Top Gun movie, because it's a thing, um, and that's all I'm going to say about it. You know, I think Tom Cruise has made, like, over a hundred movies. So if I haven't seen one, I don't think that just makes me not a Tom Cruise fan. <laughs> I don't think that's fair to say. Okay, I'll, I'll give you that. Oops. I don't appreciate that. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> did not mean to offend. <laughs> um. well, the guy makes a lot of movies and, and he's a, he shows no, no sign of slowing or stopping, that's for sure. Have you seen um, the James Corden interview, or I think it's James Corden, that they do a like a musical version of a little snippet from each one of his movies? And it's like eight minutes long, and they go through his entire career together <laughs> and get thrown like props and like change their outfits. It's amazing, and I. I was watching it and was like, God, I haven't heard of half of these movies. <laughs> how many movies? I think I even turned it off before it was over. That's how long it was. Wow. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's he's been in a couple couple Just movies. Just a few. So that is the other thing you should do on your break. Yeah, apparently so. <laughs> James Corden has really got uh, celebrity interviews figured out. I think if I had to watch one person interview any given celebrity, it would probably be him because he can definitely. Uh, he's pretty entertaining. Yeah. I watched uh, him interview Gordon Ramsay, and Ooh. they interviewed, they were, they were on treadmills, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they had control, each of them had control over the speed and incline of the other's treadmill, <laughs> and uh, they were asked trivia questions, and if they answered a question right, they got to turn up the other person's <laughs> treadmill. So, I love that. Corden was asked questions about food because it's Ramsey's specialty, and Gordon Ramsey was asked questions about boy bands because Corden said that was his specialty. So, it was, uh, it was very interesting. That's awesome. All right. So, this is what we got from that process. Um, so, what I would do is then come in here and just smooth this thing out. And we could end up with that, which I gotta say, that's not. Actually, I'm gonna let that speak for itself. <laughs> Hi, Cameron. Cameron. Um. Yeah. So that's actually kind of cool. That's not a bad way to do it. A little bit of setup. Um, I'm going to compare that. Let's just see. I'm going to take that. I'm going to make another copy of our master. I'm curious. I'm going to go ahead and come in here. I'm going to explode these. I'm wondering if everything, does everything meet well? Uh, not really. And undo that explosion. Because I want to get... I want to get each of these meeting absolutely. In the middle, because I want to see what happens if I loft these these two sections. Whoops. Just just curious. Ooh, that one actually looks like it meets pretty well. Um, let me grab this one right here, scale it back. So I have to do a little deformation there. Let's see where that meets up here. Oh, help. Lost my helicopter. All right, <laughs> looks good. All right, so I'm going to take all of this now and explode it. And I only need, I actually, like I said, this, this is uniform, so I only need half of it. So I'm going to grab these two lines. Weld those. Let's check this side. Ooh, right there. Ooh. Weld those. This is all coming together pretty, pretty nice. Ooh, breaks right there. Perfect. Weld those. And now I'm going to grab one, two, three lines. And I am going to go to uh, curve a loft and skin those contours and see what happens. Skinning, skinning, skinning. Hmm. I'm not feeling confident about this, like because nothing's happening. All right. Some people are saying that they um, missed how you got the shell part. Do you wanna go back? This over this that? this thing right here. Mm -hmm. All I did in that case, I have this reference photo, so I literally traced this first shape. This shape right here was traced off of here. 
this profile right here is traced off of here, and then this above view is traced off of here. And then I just kind of uh, put them approximately together. Um, as I mentioned this before, these three images are not perfectly in scale with each other, so they don't actually line up ideal perfectly. So uh, we're kind of we're kind of doing one of those mm, kind of things. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So if that answered your question, great. If not, let me know, and we can <laughs> dig deeper into it. going to take that real quick. All right. So I'm curious if these don't quite meet, if something like that's going on. That looks like it meets right there. That looks like it meets right there. I'm doing the thing again. I'm leaning close to my computer <laughs> in hopes that it'll be easier to see something. All right, I'm gonna take those again and I'm gonna actually just go Turn, go my tool palettes and turn uh, curve loft on. That way I can just hit this button. Is there one? No, it's a skin tip. Okay, so something, something can't be. Something's not right. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna something put. Is wrong. This a sounds thing like here. a job for Magnum PI. <laughs> I'll be right there as soon as I finish building the helicopter. All right. <laughs> Skin the contours again. Yui! That's not ideal. I think I might have hit the wrong. Nope, that was it. Come here, come here, tool palette. All right. All right, so I want this one this one and this one and I believe that's the right button that's skin contours I am not getting a thing uh oh hey it wouldn't be the first time I uh, fought with an extension while you guys watched so I'm, I'm really loving Callie Callie right now who just keeps reminding you to save I think she's getting a little anxiety <laughs> because she hasn't seen you saved in a, in a while. and What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> and I totally get it. Makes sense. Okay. <laughs> All right. For Michelle and Callie, yep. I will save. Whew. Whew. Thanks. There we go. All now right. we can all breathe easier. So for whatever reason, I'm hitting skin contours, and it is just straight up not liking it. So I'm going to do – I'm going to try – I'm going to have one last effort. I don't know what that is. I'm going to break each of these at the end so they don't quite meet. I know it's going to give me a gap, but Christian I want to see... Christian's suggesting maybe try an arc instead of a straight line. Uh, they should be welded lines right now. All right, so now I have three not quite connected arcs. Let's see what happens. I'm sorry, I didn't understand one of the questions they no. asked, Aaron. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know how you hollowed out the shell. Oh, this right here? Uh, you'll have to rewind. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, this was a series of push, pull, and scale. Yeah. So I had my original profile, pulled it down one increment, scaled it, and kept doing that out until I got out to this uh, shape at the front, which may be the best way uh, to do this so far. If you may say so yourself, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Me. All right. I'm going to try something else. I'm going to save because I do that because I'm so good at it now. And I'm going to go enable <laughs> uh, soap, skin, and bubble. Ooh, yeah. And just as you did that, Keenan suggested it. Oh, just saying. I'll still give you that credit. Was, that was clutch. <sighs> All right, so I think I got to grab these three. Skin. <sighs> Closed loop. So something's not right. Oh, I wonder if I'm getting extra. Let me just pick one, two, three. Skin. No. 
You know, sometimes it's funny. Get this connected here. So I'm, I'm going to cut that off the bottom. I don't know if that connecting geometry is messing with what I'm doing or not. One curve, 59 edges, 70 edges. All right. Let's get that. No, still doesn't like it. All right. So now I'm going to go in here. And when I have this kind of problem, when I'm working with a wireframe and something's not connected, what I'll try to do is go grab an end. So I go into move. I don't pre-select anything, but just hover over the end and click on it and drag it around. If you get both lines coming with, it means that point is actually connected to, to the two lines. So that's actually connecting right there. If you grab an end point like this and slide it away and one of the lines comes with, this may be your issue. Um, I think, whoops, I think that was a problem. So I had a very tiny line that was connecting those two lines. So when I selected this curve and this curve, they were actually connected by another line that was real small in between, which I may actually have more in there. Yup, look at that. So I did a group select over the end here. We got a teeny tiny little line. I'm gonna undo a couple times. All right, so here is the problem. A little tiny geometry right there at the peak. Could be, I'm not saying that this is definitely what it was, but it could be that I'm just coming in here chopping up geometry to see if I can get this thing to work. <laughs> so I may have brought that all upon myself. All right, so I'm gonna grab those lines again. I'm going to re-weld. All right, so now I hopefully have one line meeting another line, meeting a third line, and skin, which, you know, <laughs> now that I've done it, that may actually have been the reason that I couldn't get Curve Loft to work too. We'll try Soap Bubble and Skin first, and then we'll come back to it and uh, maybe give uh, Fredo another shot at it. So I'm gonna crank that up to 20 divisions. 10's gonna be a little too blocky. That looks good, I'm gonna go ahead and hit her, let it stitch it. Looks good. So now I'm gonna grab this and we're gonna apply some pressure. I'm gonna bubble this thing. I usually use 100. I don't know how you guys use it, um, but usually when I come in here, I hit 100 and see what happens. Um, <laughs> Nine times out of 10, I have it facing backwards and whatever pressure I put in makes it go in rather than come out, but uh, yeah. So that's 100. You can see that's not quite enough though. That's not, I'm getting this little bit of a indent right here. So let's try 120. That's better. My concern with this is that in order to get the proper bulk out around here, it's gonna to be too much and it's gonna be you know, bulging out on the sides here, but we'll see. So I know the last thing in the world I wanna do is offend any soap, skin, and bubble lovers. Oh boy, there um, go. <laughs> But the issue that I end up running into with, with soap, skin, and bubble is if I'm trying to match a surface exactly, it's hard because I don't quite have the uh, control I want because really what I want is right here I want this to bubble out less than I want it to bubble up here in front you know what I mean because um, I want this this is if you look at it from the side this is kind of a almost straight side it doesn't bubble out like this but because the way soap skin and bubble is it takes that whole surface and bubble now I know I could control that by breaking this into smaller pieces I could put an arc like this and then put a separate surface here and here but I didn't <laughs> that's really the, that's really the issue there. <laughs> um, all right, I got I got back up on uh, on our comments. Ian went in and checked to see if he could get. We got a full on model along going here. Let's try skin contours one more time. Now that I got rid of that extra line. There it is. <laughs> Turns out if you model it correctly, extensions work perfectly. Who knew? Wow. And look at that. That's see, and that's this is what I'm talking about. This is pretty much exactly the shape I want. That's that almost straight. I got the, the bulge and it, it comes out correctly. It slopes down correctly. That is really what I was looking for when I did that. All right, I'm gonna grab these lines and put them back where they were. Um, now I'm gonna grab those two lines plus this line here and do another skin contour, whoops. 
that's not, that's not gonna work. Uh, so nope. he just slipped on some soap or something. Yeah. I wonder if I might not have. I'm gonna temporarily hide this working thing and check and see if I got the same thing going on here. Nope. Um, maybe if I lean further forward, I'll be able to see this better again. Let's try this again. Nope, that's connecting up. That's connecting up. So it should work. There's one of my least favorite world. Oh, there we go. That's the problem. <laughs> this, this line wasn't welded. All right, so I'm going to grab this and this. I'm going to re-weld that. And now uh, select that, and this, and this, and mm, so close. All right. Uh, all right, I'm gonna take these two lines, just like I did before, cut them out, paste them on the side like this, and now I can go in and start doing some investigation. Oh, got the same problem, look at that. Two edges right down here. Zoom in as tight as I can and lean my head really close to the screen because yeah, we know that there. helps. Just get up in there. Yeah. I think it, when you yell at it too, it works better. <laughs> if you push your mouse button harder, yeah, that helps also. Exactly. Click faster. Um, let's re weld that thing. All right. There we go. <laughs> Lawrence is telling me to save, and I have to agree. Just do it. Okay. How hard is it, Aaron? Come on. You're making us all freak out over I here. I know. There's a curve, there's a curve, there's a curve. All right, Ian, what's going on? Are you able to do the bottom section? I, I'm, I'm not really sure what's happening. All right, get those three again. It's like skipping this line for some reason, which is weird to me. Um, all right, I'm gonna try something. So if I rotate the curves. Nah, I couldn't trick it. <laughs> it's smarter than in that. Hmm. Um, this may be a spot where what happens if let me just double check my points again. Looks good. Good. That's good. All right, we'll try. We'll try that. Um, they aren't welded right now. I have three separate curves. That's a curve. That's a curve. That's a curve. So theoretically, <laughs> oh, theoretically, we, we got we're good to go. Um, but let's try this. Let's. Now it's all one curve. I've never done this before. I'm gonna <laughs> save and hit. No, not doing, not not doing a thing there. All right. <laughs> let's. Uh, so now let's try go in and break it. I'm gonna just draw a line from here to here, and a line from here to here. Just for fun, a line from here to here. Ooh, that's interesting. Why did I not get geometry there? From here. Okay, right, that time I did. All right, now if I just grab these three, ooh, extension weld. Okay, here, good. And two, three. No. Hmm. All right, should you go back to the root of it, start it over from scratch? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm trying to give you some context. Oh, I want to start over. Um, uh, what I may do, what I may do is just come in here and, well, let's just try it. Let's see if I break that right there, what happens? <laughs> Nothing. Okay. But now we know. If I connect here to here skin that. No, why is it doing that? That doesn't seem right. Hmm. So 
don't have extra geometry in there. And I'm gonna try breaking this side just for the fun of it. Mm -hmm. So fun. Yeah. <laughs> nope. All right, one last time. Boom, skin it. No. So yeah, uh, I cannot skin this with Curve Loft. Oh boy. What are you going to do, Aaron? Yeah. We all are on the edge of our seats. I know. I'm going back to, uh, this is a weird thing to say, but I'm, <laughs> I'm going to have to go 100% with native tools. I just can't draw this curved shape using uh, extensions, apparently. All you need is the SketchUp. That's right. That's all you need. I'm going to go back to where I was, where I had a thing. So, I'll hold on to that for later. Um, yeah, I don't know why why that is not working. Do you guys, if anybody has any cool ideas uh, of why this might not work or have any thoughts on, because I mean, I've done, we, well, we've done it before. This is basically how we built Iron Man's helmet was get, grabbing a series of lines. Um, but I don't know why, here, I'm gonna try. I'm terrible at giving up. I don't know if you guys have caught that or not. <laughs> but I don't give up well. All right, I'm going to try breaking it and now having four lines. Still, it's weird. It's ignoring this section of curve. I really don't get why that why that is. It's like it's pulling back here instead of there. Mm. All right, uh, all right. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go do something productive with my time. <laughs> um, let's get this surface back again. I'm committed. I gotta get a. I, <laughs> I gotta get a helicopter out of here one way or another. <laughs> I have faith in you. I know. All right. So now I'm gonna come back here. Do the same thing I did before. Create my, uh, for those of you who missed it, we'll, we'll go through this again. It'll be actually kind of cool to get done with this and go, this uh, whole thing was we modeled with native so tools. so much stuff. Yes, and just went back to our roots. That's right. Keeping it simple. Well, okay, maybe not simple, but keeping it pure. We're Ian's suggesting you could upload your file to the forum and then everyone else could try to fix it. Sure. I, I will throw it up there when we uh, take a break in a little bit and I'll, I'll get it up there and you guys can poke it. All right. A couple more lines in here and then uh, we'll do real quick, do this body and then we'll move on to another piece. Perhaps the tail. Ooh, and the rotors. Rotors will be fun. Yeah. And I'll put it up on 3D that. Warehouse and uh, challenge you guys to use MS Physics to spin the rotors. Ooh. I'm not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> MS, MS Physics is too much brain for myself. All right. Uh, I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, nope. Push pull. Scale down, uniform scale, and then, oh, we're good there. You know what? I just recently realized that summer, seriously, is like just about over. Well, that'd be great because it's like 99 degrees outside and <laughs> I'm about ready for winter. Oh, but yeah, Aww. but summer. <laughs> you can't have it all, Aaron. I can want it all. <laughs> it's true. Um, That's a sad moment. It is. Remember school? School was nice. <laughs> like, you don't... I don't think you realize how how, nice, how good you got it, you know, until you don't got it anymore, but... Ain't that the truth. Man, how cool would it be to just go somewhere and learn stuff and 
that's all you had to worry about. Hold up, isn't that what we're doing right now? Well, yeah, I mean this too, but yeah. Because I'm, in, I feel like I'm in school right now. Yeah, but you also got bills to pay at some point, and like, no, that's the. Needs to think <laughs> oh, sorry. About that. <laughs> Welcome to school with SketchUp, where <laughs> you are fully encouraged to ignore all your problems of reality. <laughs> I I didn't say anyone else had to ignore them. I just said it's Friday afternoon. <laughs> I'm focused on this helicopter. I want to think about bills. Cool. That's that, I'll let that go. All right. Ian's asking, so I don't know because I don't have any kids, but Ian's asking how many summer holiday weeks do the kids get over there? Because what do we get? It was like... Uh, it's about three months. It's not like three full months, though. Because doesn't school... School well, goes see. into school June. School went to May. Um, we'll go to about here. Um, school so ended... June, you have all July, and then what do you go back to? Labor Day? It's somewhere around there, yeah. Middle... Mid-August. Yeah, so that's a solid 12 weeks. Yeah. Maybe 10. All right. Take that. Smooth it. Mmm. Smooth. All right. All right. Take that. Slide it on over. Line it up perfectly. Anders is asking... Isn't it possible to extrude the surfaces from the different sides and then align surfaces, trim it, and voila? One more time now. <laughs> <laughs> he asks, isn't it possible to extrude the surfaces yes. from different sides, then align surfaces, then trim it? It certainly is, and we will go do that because uh, the first time I made, a, made car geometry, I did exactly that. And there's ups, and there's some downs with that, but we'll go look at it in just one second. Um, okay. Let me, let me get this lined up first, because something wasn't I'm making it a group right now, because I don't want the geometry to weld. I'm going to look at it. That looks like it all lines up right. So I'm going to explode it. Yeah, that looks nice. So I got that nice thin line. It means it's all one profile, triple click. It's all connected. I can re-soften, and there we go. There's our native tools only helicopter body. Save. All right, so what <laughs> I could do, what you're asking, I'm going to grab another copy of this right here. Apparently, I'm putting it way off on the side because, uh, you know, it may catch fire or something. Oh, boy. What I can do is go into each of these groups and push-pull larger than the whole body. And I will get that for each of them. Let me go high here. Uh, be on the inside here. Burrow wet my way in to get this. Mm -hmm. There we go. So I'll extend that long. All right, so there we go. So now we have all three shapes and they should, because they're just push-pulled surface, each of them should show up as a solid group. They do. What I can do now is grab one of them and grab a second one after I turn on solid tools. And we will want to use a one of these. Intersect between two, which should, should create, hopefully, a new solid group. And now I will intersect that with the third group, and I get that. So here's what I was saying. It's it's kind of usable. Um, so James wants to know how you hollowed out the tail. What was the command you used? Delete. Ah. Uh, oh, never mind. He figured it out. Okay. So this this is what it looks like. Delete. So I didn't mean to be sarcastic. That was really what I did. To just leave the face. <laughs> I felt sarcastic to me. <laughs> well, sometimes I do that. I apologize. All right. So that's that's what we get out of it. So with that, so if you're dealing with something blocky, like an older model car, like something where like, you know, you have big flat surfaces and, and vertical sides, that works well. The profile of a tank, perfect, because you can go through and just, just push that through each other. Problem is as soon as you get real smooth stuff, 
it starts to have a problem because your profiles were only pulled from these three directions, top, front, and side. So we could have done this, but you can see there's definitely a downside to it. It doesn't mean it's not a great place to start from. Mm -hmm. um, you could go from here and then start working um, maybe some push-pull and scaling with geometry, but uh, it's pretty rough to go for this rounded of a shape to make that work. Um, you're be probably better off, in this case, we'll keep that, um, mm -hmm. doing something like a sphere, because one of the things we could have done, and remember I challenge you guys with this, I don't know if anybody has, has worked on it at all, making a sphere in 10 seconds or so, is mm -hmm. come in here and um, do something like, get, so get, get yourself a sphere, and then I'm gonna turn on hidden geometry, and actually, you know, do deformations like this, where you can kinda just section by section stretch this geometry out. So maybe that's, that ends up being my helicopter body and then come in this way. Whoops, I missed a chunk. <laughs> you, all right, Eek. try that again. There we go. Um, so I'm just using move. I'm just grabbing uh, rings a little bit at a time. I'm just using move to move them along green axes and then grab that and I can scale about the middle to kind of squish together. And you could do, do that sort of thing too. Maybe even do something like move this vertically to kind of get that specific shape we were looking at. So you'd be better off doing something along these lines rather than uh, trying to use that intersect because like I said, it's just, it's just a little bit too square of a shape for that to work well on. Something like that, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that would probably be better off. You'd, you'd end up with a better piece that way than you would this way. So like I said, if you're working on something real blocky, it's, it's, it is a cool tool. I mean, it's, it's a good way to do it, but uh, this particular shape is probably a little bit uh, not the ideal solution. All right, so of the ways we tried, we tried our push-pull scale right here, which got us this shape, which is pretty good. That's not bad. We tried uh, our extension, our lofting extension, which got us to one-eighth of a helicopter. <laughs> and that's not fair. I didn't try. Actually, I could come in here right now and give credit where credit's due. Um, I will say it actually gave us a quarter. And I only tried for the front half. I didn't try for the back half. It could have worked great. I don't know. Anyhow, uh, that didn't work so well. Uh, the intersecting planes, not so much. And uh, there's promise here with the scaling a circle. What I would probably would have done was taken that, grabbed that uh, uh, sphere, dropped it right here at the biggest point, and then done exactly what I did where I grabbed segments and scoot them uh, in a projection, or I'm uh, sorry, a parallel projection view, and then kind of done that, and then did the same thing with the top. Grabbed it, flipped it over, done it on the top, and same thing, scaled those sections. That would not, not, would not have been a bad way to do it either. I do like this. I like the way this turned out. So I'm, I'm going to move forward with this. Grab the rest of this stuff. I'm not going to get rid of any of it. I'm just going to move it over. Just going to save it forever. Right. Hoard it over here in the That's corner. That's right. All right, so move that over. I better turn it around because it's embarrassing. It's facing the wrong way. All right, there's the, the junkyard over there. All right, so next thing we got is we got this tail. And we actually have two major pieces of the body. This uh, rotary assembly, this thing up here, and then we have the tail coming out. And then there's, of course, there's the skids and the rotor and the tail, tail thingy. It's That's all part of it, too. Slightly divergent question, is that okay? I love it. Does anyone know why in rendering with V-Ray, next main render page is hiding when clicking on the setting? Because something's wrong. There's an issue <laughs> with V-Ray and window priority. 
I don't fully understand what the issue is. Uh, there's a couple threads going on the forum though. So I would hop up there and uh, check there because people who are actually using beer on a regular basis are up there. And uh, I think occasionally chaos group guys show up on there. So go check that out up there. All right, uh, I'll put the forum link up there for you. Beauty. All right. Thanks, Aaron. My pleasure. All right, so I'm going to just uh, kind of come up with what I think this shape looks like. It looks like it's really pretty much more or less straight. It might have a slight curve to it, but for what I'm doing, I'm going to say it's pretty close to being like that. Um, but I'm fairly certain that the body is actually a cylinder. I think it goes, it's round that whole way. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do, I'm going to make one section right here and then another section to here and then a third section. So I'm going to actually build this in three pieces. Um, this over here, the, the, the extension I was using was Curvaloft, which is an awesome, awesome tool. Uh, everything that Fredo makes is great. Uh, I don't know, there's, there's fully, fully possible that this was an error I made is the reason this isn't working. So uh, yeah, don't let, don't let what I just did let you have any kind of negative connotation of what Curvaloft is, because it is an incredible extension. This is a live stream of potential disaster. That's right. Never know what could happen. I you screw up know. so you don't have to. <laughs> so one of the services we provide here at SketchUp. <laughs> Free with your subscription. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take this by that section of the tail. And we've, we've already pretty well established that we're not 100% to scale here, but I do just want to get a couple of uh, measurements here. All right, so I want to figure out how wide this is on one side, how wide I am right here, here, and I'm going to say this is the same. All right. Now, where are we at? We're just over an hour. We actually started about an hour ago. It's about a quarter after when we got yeah. into this thing. Yeah. Doing good. Doing good. Cruising. All right. So we'll uh, we'll throw a little time on this tail. We'll get this tail looking like something, and then we'll uh, we'll take a break. And I'll get the I'll throw I'll throw that model up on the forum. When you say a tail looking like something, do you mean a tail? I mean exactly what I knew exactly what I was saying. <laughs> it will look like something. <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna grab this. This is gonna be kind of my reference group, my reference geometry. As such, I don't want my actual geometry that I'm working on to meld with it. So I'm gonna grab it and I'm going to make it a group. Now I'm gonna draw a circle right here, the green axes. And I'm gonna come out, I'll start like this. And I'm gonna push pull this down to here and I'm gonna grab this, this end of the circle, and I'm gonna grab it by the middle point of the circle. I'm gonna put that middle point on the middle of this reference line. So now I'm running from middle to middle. And now what I can do is take that, hit scale, again, option scale vertically up like this, and there we have that first section of the tail. Um, it does go wider than that though, so I'm gonna, again, option scale out to here. Do the same thing here. Grab that cir circle, 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 scale that, option scale it out, like, oops, option, not shift scale, there we go. And I'll do the exact same thing here. Grab this circle, push, pull this out to this line move it from <laughs> the middle of the circle. Oh, I actually don't have, oh, there we go. Nope. I may actually come in here and lock this temporarily. 
because I don't want to have that happen again. So we move this circle from the center. Oh, but here's the problem I'm going to run into here is this line doesn't have a center anymore because I put a, another segment in there. Tricky. Oh no, what do I do? Well, glad I asked. <laughs> what I can do is I'm just going to shoot a line over here, infer use inferencing to make a vertical line, and that way I can actually take this, move it from the center of the circle vertically, hit the up arrow, and then just hover over until I get the middle there. Perfect. Now I can go uh, scale, option, scale it up, option, scale it out. All right, one more time, pull that forward to here. Ooh, look, that looks about right. Um, so I'm just gonna save myself a step and not center it, just grab the bottom and pull it down. All right, grab all of that, smooth it. We got. Got a, little, got a little carry away with the smoothing there, so I'm going to maybe bring that down. I do want that face geometry. Um, I can unlock and delete that rep. No, you know what? I'll keep it because I'm doing that. I'm keeping old things. And I'll throw it over here in the junkyard. And let's see. I can now take this. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show my hidden geometry. I'm going to grab it by a point. Whee. Hold on, where's my middle? I don't know. I think <laughs> right there. There we go. Actually, I'm gonna need some sort of a throw a line. <laughs> I need a handle. Yeah. All right, there we go. We're gonna group these two together. Actually, I'll just grab this one. Command X, double click into the group, edit, paste in place. That will put that geometry inside the group. So now I can actually just grab it by that handle, uh, bring it over here. I'm going to use that handle as a point that I can rotate from too. Rotate that 90 degrees. And I'll just line that up. The body there. Uh, same thing here. This one's a little easier to find the middle of because it's right there. Oops. Man, that's oh, I didn't group it. Oh, I'm, I'm going to throw that line in just. Just, just, to, just to cause. All right, make that a new group. Grab it by my handle. Throw my handle on the page. I really don't care where, but put it on the page. I'm gonna use that handle to rotate by the vertical plane. Bring it to 90, and then I'm clicking my rather than clicking the actual geometry. I'm just clicking anywhere on the drawing to use that as a reference point. And there we go. Um, it does look like the geometry of this tail dies into uh, this rotary assembly thing, so that should all come together. But right now, I'm not too I'm not too disappointed with where we're at. No, I think it's pretty impressive. Native it tools is looking this like a helicopter. Na yeah, that see, and that's what I go for. Well, I right mean, now you could mistake it as a fish of some sort, maybe. <laughs> if I was to hide this, you might go. Oh, you're you're building a uh, anglerfish, <laughs> but we'll get there. Obviously, we'll get there. <laughs> rotors help. When's the last time you saved, Aaron? Right now, duh. No, oh, duh. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> Everyone's freaking out. <laughs> okay, guys. All right, that feels pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna take a uh, about a five minute break or so. I'm going to throw this uh, helicopter SKP file up onto the forum in the, uh, we'll put it in the happenings uh, category because this is what's happening right now. And you guys can grab it and see if you can get Curvelop to work for me and uh, it'll be up there for you to play with. Yeah, let's see what you guys got. So we'll do that. So be back at this in about five or ten and uh, we'll get, get going. <laughs> See you soon. All right. Oh, wrong mouse.
I agree, Callie, but unfortunately, all I have is a yo-yo. I did just post it, but I posted it in 19.2, so let me also save down a 2018 version and post that as well. save that. I wasn't paying attention when I just did. There we go. All right. I'm always breaking something. It was a quick break. All right, so it is up there. It's uh, it's on the forum, so feel free to do your thing, whatever, whatever your thing may be. Oh, you know, I just realized too that my, uh, my key logging software stopped for some reason. Yeah, that's why, because it, it's not working. That'll do it. Wow, that's harsh. Keycaster will now terminate. Not just close. We're not just going to shut it down. We're going to terminate it. Sounds a little harsh. Um, yeah, you should watch how you use the word terminate. If you haven't seen the new Spider-Man movie, it can get you in trouble. Um, so somebody was saying, uh, trying inverting this geometry to see if curve aloft will work. So. I'm willing to give that a shot. I'm gonna give it a shot, but I'm still gonna stick to the native tools helicopter because that's an accomplishment if we can walk away saying we did all of this with only native tools. That's pretty sweet. All right, but we'll give it another, we'll give it another try. Nerp. It did not work. Same, same results, just upside down. All right, but you guys, you guys got it now. You go grab it. You uh, mess with it. Do whatever you need up there. And just to throw out, if you guys are not on the forum, it is an awesome place to uh, get help, get questions answered, that kind of thing. Uh, you should really, really check it out if you're not already using it. We did try soap, skin, and bubble, and soap, skin, and bubble technically worked, but I personally was not a fan of the, uh, the profile it gave. So I wanted a, a more controlled mesh like the one we got right here. All right, I'm going to take our existing geometry as it is right now, and I'm going to regroup it into another group, and then I'm going to put it on a layer called hold. This is a thing I, I do. I do this a lot in my uh, workflow. I create my hold layer and I throw anything on it that I don't want to see. Um, I always group it first and then put it on there. But I do that rather than, I do sometimes right click and hide something, but I literally will have gotten this point where I only do that if I'm going to hide something for literally like one or two steps. If it's going to be anything longer than that, I put it on a hold layer and turn that layer off. Um, my problem is too many times I've taken some geometry and hidden it uh, and forgot about it, that's happened, um, or forgot what group, what context I was in, so that hidden geometry ended up being part of a group that once I left the group, it wasn't as simple as just going, say, unhide, because I had to go back into context, turn it off, that sort of thing. So uh, this hold layer is something that I do a lot, 
uh, just to simplify and speed up my my work. All right. So uh, Dave, I don't know if you saw uh -huh. Dave's comment, but I'm just gonna read it anyway because it's so nice. You okay. Ready? <laughs> he says, even though it's taken a little time, what you've done is very impressive and provides me with new insight and appreciation for SketchUp. Aw, thanks, And just Dave. thank you, Dave. That was such a nice thing to say. Way to not be a troll. We appreciate you. <laughs> no, that's cool. And uh, I hope you guys realize that there's some very intentional behaviors that I have here, um, like not knowing exactly what we're going to do when we start. Uh, we did. We talked about it, and it would be absolutely possible for me to spend a day prepping exactly here, step by step, how everything works. But we, I don't want to do that. I want to get you guys involved. I want to hear your thoughts on input. Um, I don't want to, you know. We were joking about it earlier, but hopefully, my pain keeps you from having to experience the same pain in the future. Um, and you know, hopefully, it's it's somewhat amusing as well. <laughs> Somewhat. <laughs> Somewhat. Okay, so for this section right here, um, that's right. It's it's uh, this is this is a lot of times this ends up being kind of like sculpting. Um, <laughs> so designer hacks you missed, but uh, the the body that we created right here was actually used only native tools. So this whole thing was push, pull, and scale to create all this geometry so far. So. I'm gonna push through on that. I'm gonna see if I can get this whole helicopter put in using only native tools. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Um, uh, somebody said, Kanan, why, why was the, the bottom corner has a little line? That passes the lines. So I'm assuming bottom corner, we're looking at this guy right here. We go into context. Hold on, let me get my, oh, look at that, you're right. Uh. It is so tiny. All right, um, we gotta get rid of that. It's, it's just about impossible to see. I mean, I can't even zoom in tight enough to get a good <laughs> look at it. Right there, right there, see that, right there. Oh, see, see, this is so. Watch when I when I move my mouse just slightly. See how it bobs from one point to another. That's telling me there's actually two points there, because everything's welded. I'm not able to just grab it and move it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on one point, I'm gonna bob the other point, and and that draws a line between those two, which breaks it off the welded section. Now I should be able to just do uh, group select. No, nope, it was not that easy. Nothing there was that easy. That, that is some ninja discovering right there. Nice, nice spying right there. I'm impressed. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you can't even get in close enough. Can't even get it, but yeah, <laughs> you're right. All right, here, I'm gonna do. All right, there it's it like is. A tw it's like tweezing, like <laughs> you have to like really get in there, right. like trying to get that corner of the wall where the kitchen wall meets the living room wall when you're repainting right. something. There we go. Really getting in there. Redrew that line, re-weld that line, re-weld this line. <laughs> Keenan ex uh, suggested exploding the curve. That probably would have worked. Yeah, that was a good idea. Right. Let's see. <laughs> Yay, look at that. <laughs> see, I told you it was my fault. Dang, uh, <laughs> that was impressive. That was some ace troubleshooting right there. <laughs> All right, let's uh, go I'm team. Not, that's right. I'm not going to, I'm still gonna, I'm still doing it. Don't worry. <laughs> Helicopter's still gonna get done with native tools. But again, credit where credit's due. Curve off is awesome. We could we could go on further. We'll see if if everything goes swimmingly fast with the rest of this. Maybe we'll come back and curve aloft some helicopter. We we'll do a little side by side. Cool. That is very what what it what. All right. Nice. Okay. Over here now. Um, so I'm gonna turn my hold layer back off. 
And I'm going to start, this is a symmetrical shape, so I'm going to start throwing a line up the middle. And I'm going to draw a line here. Kind of looks like I got something like this going on. <laughs> I can't see the whole shape, so I'm actually going to fake a little bit of this. I'm going to draw a bezier from here to here. Straight down here. And I'm going to draw a bezier from here to here as well. So there's my rotor box. <laughs> I, I have no idea what this thing is Whatever called. Whatever that means. I really got to find something to model that I know more about. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe a haunted house. That houses, houses are definitely a thing that I know things about. <laughs> it definitely works better. You know things about houses. I know things about houses. All right, I'm going to grab all of that, and I'm going to weld it for right now. Um, and lay it flat, and I'm going to turn it this way, and let's see, I'm going to grab it by the middle point and line that middle point up with this. So, all right, so it definitely, kind of the whole thing kind of goes like this. So I'm going to start real simple like. I'm going to pull it well past where it goes. I'm going to turn on uh, x-ray. I'm going to grab the top piece and I'm going to scoot it backwards. Something like that. I'm going to turn on my hidden geometry. So I did weld it. You guys saw that. I welded it very intentionally um, because I wanted, uh, I didn't, because I didn't want to have breaks. I wanted to have this as smooth a piece as possible. Obviously, the issue came up there that uh, I, I now only want to manipulate a portion of that geometry. Um, and I can do this with my hidden geometry turned on, hopefully. Maybe not so much. Grab this, scale it back. So it's looking okay. It does kind of look like what it does is it kind of goes like this, rounded over on the side, um, which we can totally do with native tools. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> Got it. Don't stress. Nailed it. All right, I'm gonna grab that, make it a group, verify that is in fact solid. Yes, it is. I'm going to add this to my whole layer right now. And I'm going to. Designer Hack says weld isn't native. Ah, oh, dang. <laughs> All right, I'm signing off. I'm going home. I'll see you next week. All right, Aaron, I'm getting you a cup of coffee, too. <laughs> You're absolutely right. <sighs> I failed you guys. You're right. You're the shame. The you're one hundred percent right. It's it is not even a little bit native. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna draw a line here. <sighs> you're okay. It's right. just a, it's a you use it so much that it feels native. It, it's true. It, it is. I do. I do actually. Honestly, I mean that is definitely a uh, a tool that I use quite a bit. All right, I'm gonna do that. So when you create geometry, um, kind of cool that you can actually, why is that not locked? Lock. There we go. Um, once you create a curve, if you grab the curve and move it, you move that curve. But if you grab it by an end point, you can actually do some deformation to the curve shape. See that? Um, that's just by using the move, to move on the end tools rather than uh, the body of the, the curve. More you know, kind of moment there. The more you know. That's why I need that. I need that little I know. sound from the. the 
Hold on, I got it. All right. I don't find it. That's what that job's all about, Michelle. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually, I want that, that curve I just made to be a negative shape. Mm. So I'm gonna do that and trace the outside. That's right, the more you win moments are like, that's, that's the SketchUp quick win is the more you know. Do, 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 do. <laughs> that's probably a copyright issue, huh? We grab Could be. Of that. Yeah, I mean, we, unless we decide to pay for it and license it, in which case we would just immediately go bankrupt as a company. <laughs> Whoa, that's <laughs> that that fell apart hard fast. <laughs> all right, um, all right. So what I want to do, I'm thinking about this. I did this maybe a little bit not perfectly. <laughs> what I'm going to do is create this rectangle. There it was. Oh, if you guys could hear that or not, but. Hold on. The more you know. That's right. All right. Um, retiring. I'm gonna take this. <laughs> this was actually not quite big enough, so I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger this way. Um, stretch it a little bit this way. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace this shape onto that surface I just made. So by doing this, now I know that when I make my extrusion shape, if I keep this line straight and this line straight and keep my cuts that I need to make inside the shape, it'll line up with the edges that already exist. I don't know if you guys saw when we did the push-pull, the solid tools thing on the, uh, on the bar of soap down here, on this guy right here. Uh, if I look at this, some of these spots, they don't connect. So like right here, this, the arc that came this way probably went up higher than this arc. So I had this, this piece that should have all come together to a point if it had connected correctly. Same thing here, um, same thing here. So that's because those, those shapes they connected didn't come to an edge and touch. Um, by putting those lines in first, now I can go in and throw my curves in and I'll be assured that what actually draw matches. So let, let me show you, if, that, if that's a little bit confusing, it's because it's, it's a hard thing to describe. So I'm gonna come in here and draw an arc from here to here. I'm gonna pull my first arc straight across this line, grab this line and bring it down. Do the same thing here, click here, click here. All right, so there's the arc that I'm gonna go with. It didn't line up exactly, but I'm also trying to be conscious of time at this point. Um, you can't just model forever. I'm gonna grab it. Things will eventually stop working <laughs> if we go forever. All right, pull it through both directions. And grab it and group it. We have another solid group. I'm gonna turn hold back on, change this to layer zero. So Declan wants to inform you, and I think he's right, actually. It All makes right. sense if you think about physics, that the rotors actually tilt forward slightly. I buy that. Yeah, makes sense. Mm -hmm. I feel like the, the angle of them would have to be pretty on point, otherwise you I, could just immediately crash. It the seems cube. like they probably, I, <laughs> I don't know, like, do they mechanically move in order to, like, tilt the whole thing? Because I know that, like, it moves forward by going like this and tilting the rotors forward to pull air forward, so it moves forward, but I don't, there's a whole, as far as I know, I'm 90% sure that helicopters <laughs> work by magic, so. <laughs> yeah, there's no mechanical engineering That's involved, right. just magic. Yep. Yeah. You learned it here. Leo wants to know if it's possible to model the gearbox using the technique from the helicopter's body. Um, kind of, the issue, the issue is that, uh, yes, I could, because I could do a push-pull a bunch of times and slowly pull it in. Um, I think that using solid tool intersect is gonna be quicker and easier way to make this curve up here, though. Uh, so, like all SketchUp, there's probably a dozen different ways to do this, <laughs> but we're gonna go ahead and clip this off. So I'm gonna grab my rotor house body thing. <laughs> And I'm going to say subtract this section from it. And I selected it backwards. 
So I'm going to grab this section, I'm going to say subtract from this section. You know, that's one of those things I feel like I should be getting better at, but I don't feel like I get it right as often as I still could. I'm going to select all of that and Practice doesn't always make perfect. Right. All right. I'm going to turn my hold off. Ooh. <laughs> all right. These three pieces now. Um, I'm going to save. And I'm going to start by merging these two together. Grab both of these and do an outer shell. Oh, something's not solid or it's locked. Group, group. Both of them say they're not. Ooh, all right. Let's. Oh, because of the lines I put in. Uh, a solid group obviously can't include line segments like that. So once I remove it, then we're back to solid again. All right, so now I can grab this, save, outer shell, thinking, 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 solid group, click on the second one here, and there we go. All right, we have this, <laughs> all native tools. Now you would not confuse it with an anglerfish. No. <laughs> the goal. All right. No. Yeah, it's definitely, more like a tadpole now. Vote of confidence. All right. <laughs> Moving forward. So I'm going to, there's a, basically a whole assembly on this tail right here. I'm just going to go ahead and draw it separate and then just put it on here. So this, this whole body is going to go back onto the hold layer. Um, and then I'm gonna draw this by itself. We know, again, because my image is to scale, I don't have to stress about uh, making sure that I have that other piece on here. I can draw it separately and just bring it on in. So I'm gonna do this. Let's see, I'm just gonna probably keep this extremely simple. Simple is good. There's that. Um, and then let's see. It does have, it kind of steps out like this. So what I might, what I would probably do, this is not, so this is, well, here's what I'll do. Let's hear it. I'm gonna erase everything I just Should did. Should we get a drum roll? That's what I'm gonna start with. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna create this shape. It's symmetrical again, so I'm gonna draw a line top to bottom. I'm gonna do an arc top to bottom and pull it out. There we go. Grab that shape right there. Flip it over. All right, that's a profile of my tail. I hit option to move things a lot um, when I don't need to. All right, so I'm gonna take that, and flip it this direction, and I'm gonna flip it this direction. I'm going to grab it by this end point, and I'm going to put that end point right here. Now I'm going to push-pull it down to where that end's going to be, right about there. I'm going to grab this point, scoot it forward to there. Now I can grab this top shape, use scale to bring it back like that, grab the bottom shape, Scale to bring it back in like that. One more push pull to drop this all the way down. Select it. Scale right here to pull it back this way. And I'm guessing that needs to go to more of a taper, so I'm going to do an option scale to do something like that. Same thing up here. Scale, option, pull it in a little bit like that. All right. So there's my the first part of my tail. And then I got this thing coming out. <laughs> Just a thing. It's, it's a thing. Um, it looks like, all right, we might have to go look at some, some photos because I can't really piece together what's going on there. Uh, which one was it? Was it the D or an M? Or That doesn't look like the right tail. 
Oh, but we're, we're talking Magnum. I, you know, I just need to go to my desktop. Got it. Da, 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 da. Yeah, there we go. That's the thing we're going to put on there. So, put a thing and it's time, time to eyeball some stuff. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna grab this shape right here. We'll grab, let's grab both of them. I'm gonna grab this. And I'm gonna rotate it flat. I'm gonna use scale. And I'm gonna take those. So how do I want to do this? Oh, I know. I want to take this, grab that by the middle, and pull that out to give myself more of that that wing wing kind of shape. And then I can actually make it a little bit bigger. And then out here on the ends, um, it's like I got kind of a hexagon type of shape thing there very technical. I'm going to grab my <laughs> hexagon tool and go to oct polygon. I'm going to put in a six-sided find it about Math the middle. Math isn't usually conceptual, you know. What's that? Math, not usually <laughs> conceptual. Uh -huh. But, you know, it Welcome could be to my a world. kind of thing, a kind of sort of a hexagon That's right. thing. <laughs> um, so one of the things when you create a polygon, it's all one piece. It's, it's basically welded like a curve or a circle, um, even though if, if I push pull this, I do get the, the hard sides, but it is actually its own uh, special welded shape. So I can right click on it, though, and explode the curve. Then I can do things like grab just these two lines right here. Scale them back. I can use move with nothing selected to grab a point, pull it back. I, don't, I still don't remember what it looks like. I've looked at it several <laughs> times. All right, so that line goes up. Okay, so it's kind of like this kind of comes back to here. This looks like it goes to about here. Stop alt tabbing. And then that one goes basically straight down. And then this one goes more back like this. Meh. All right. And it's going to come out exactly this far. Not conceptual. Cool. <laughs> real. Real life. That's it, right. It exists. Hey, I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna say, flip along. I just started sweating because I'm so bad at this. Flip along the green direction. Oh, I nailed it. <laughs> I honestly, guys, I don't I know do, what. I mess it up too every time. I can't. I don't know why. I cannot remember how to do that. All right. So Design so, Max says there's always a 50/50 chance I get the right axis when I flip along. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't there like a 30, 30, 30 chance? Well, usually blue is not the solution. Right, that's I guess that's true. Yeah. Usually. All right, so I'm going to make this into a group so I don't weld geometry. Grab it. Stick it right there. And it definitely looks like this one right here on this particular A little bit wider at the top, maybe something more like that, and then slide this back, and then scale it up a little. Wow. All right. Super sweet. Whew. All right, I'm gonna take those two shapes now. I'm gonna grab this. Make that a group, and check both of them, make sure they're solid groups. And one more time, I'm just going to weld those two together. Um, there's, that's, that's my tail right now. <laughs> and then I just got to throw tail rotor. You guys buy that? 
tail rotor. That's right, right? I mean, it makes logical sense. Right. So. Who's our helicopter guy? Chris, Chris Ryan helped us a whole bunch when we were talking ships, but it's called a save according to YouTube. Oh, gotcha. Save. Done. <laughs> Push that in like that, and then let's see. Um, assume this doesn't come out terribly far. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put this onto our hold layer so it gets out of my way. I'm going to trace one of these blades. There's your problem. Let's try going vertically instead. That works way better. All right. I'm just going to take that then. I'm going to give it a little bit of depth. And just because I have a feeling I'm going to hear it anyhow, I'm going to go ahead <laughs> and put a taper on this thing. One question for you, Aaron. Yes. Why doesn't the 3D mouse work in layout viewports? Because the 3D mouse software is not written by us, rather by 3D Connection, the people who make the 3D mouse. And they create an extension, basically. Well, basically, it's exactly what it is. <laughs> it is an extension that, that runs the software. And up till now, we have not actually had a uh, API allowing them to uh, you know make it work so that is what they need is do we have an API is the API do we have an API for layout now uh, I, don't <laughs> I don't remember so. so as soon as we have an API in layout then they'll be able to make uh, an extension for layout that will allow that to work there too until then, though, we don't have that. Let me run that in pretty quickly. Uh huh. There's my two rear rotor blades, potentially, as it could be could be called. <laughs> and I'm going to grab all that, grab all this. Rather than using delete, or, or I'm sorry, solid tools, I'm just going to, well, actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to take this off. And I'm going to scoot these blades out a little bit. Scoot. <sighs> scoot, scoot. Yeah, I'm going to slide this, this whole thing over because I'm not enjoying trying to stick my head between the drawing and that. All right, there we go. Something's not closing here. Let's figure that out. I wonder if one of these didn't quite line up correctly. Let's do that. Let's do that from the side. Yeah, you know what? We'll just we'll just do this like this. An option and pull that through as a new surface. And we're good to go. Sometimes you can troubleshoot. Sometimes you just do it over. I get caught in that. I, I sometimes spend 
way too much time trying to figure out why something doesn't work rather than just making it work. All right, I'm going to grab this geometry, right Wouldn't click. Wouldn't it be nice if you just face. decide to not try, just be like, this is going to work now. Intersect with selection, and I can delete this face, clean up all this extra geometry on the inside. Again, I could have done this with solid tools. I could have grouped, but, but I didn't. All right, and then... I'm going to right click anywhere on here and hit orient faces. That's going to get the insides and the outsides facing the right way. And I have no idea if that's correct, if that's what it's supposed to look like or not, but that's what it looks like now. <laughs> All right, I'm going to grab that, make it a group. It's interpretive. That's right. Engineering. Turn on my hold layer. Ooh, look at that. That was close. Grab this, hold this, bring this way. Um, and I can grab it by any, any center point on here. As long as I stay on the green axes, all I got to do is go find a center point right here, like this one right here, click, and now that's lined up. And I can take this one now, push that geometry in, and now I can go through the exact same things I did before. So I can grab one solid tool, outer shell with the next solid, let it do its thing. Then again, solid tool. Oop, this is not a solid. Let's check solid inspector and find out why not. <laughs> I got a surface border. All right. That generally means I got a hole in the model somewhere. There's only a couple spots it could be. There it is. Let's close that up. Get rid of that. And now, solid. All right. I'm going to join that together with the body of the helicopter. We're still one big solid, one solid family. <laughs> All right, rotor time. Woohoo! And I've been looking forward to this part the whole time. With the exception of weld, we have stayed <laughs> pretty much with uh, native tools. All right, um, I'm going to pick a middle point. Actually, I'll just go ahead and draw a circle right here. Everyone's telling you to space. Fine. <laughs> I mean. Thanks. <laughs> all right. I'm going to. So I'm going to. So I'm going to create the center geometry first. I'm going to create it in 2D, and then I'll I'll pull it into 3D. Um, I'm going to create this rectangle from the middle. I'm going to pull that out like this, and I'm gonna wait till I get this square. There's a square, and I can take that and rotate it 45 degrees. And if I wanted to, if I wanted to resize that, all I'd have to do is grab those outside edges, hit scale, and then grab a corner and scale from the outside. And that's gonna uniformly make that rectangle or square bigger. <laughs> all right. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I can grab a point like that and come off. Not quite perpendicular. It's a little bit off. See that? Just a little. That's okay. Again, it's probably the drawing, but it's a taper and all that stuff. Um, How do you know that? I watched a documentary once. <laughs> Literally, like, no, I've seen a couple documentaries on more brag. Like three or four. Wow. Um, actually, that's probably a lie. It was probably on Mythbusters. <laughs> <laughs> Basically the same as a documentary. That's, that's mathy stuff. <laughs> All right. I'm going to do an, actually, hmm, I'm trying, how am I going to do this? I'm going to create a surface to draw a bezier on. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to draw a bezier curve because I believe the proper rotor is something along those lines, how it's bigger on one end than the other. Um, could be talking crap, but I'm fairly sure, certain it's, it's something like that. I'm pretty like sure that. that's right, too. Yeah. So I'll pull that down to here. And then we'll do the same thing we did before. I'll grab that. And I'm going to tap Option. Option says create a new surface. Bring it up like this. And then I'll grab this, scale, 
And okay, so here's something. This is this is interesting. Okay. So when okay. I go to scale, because I'm off axes right now, what I want to do is I want to take this surface and just squish it up like this, so I get my maintain this profile, just like we have been doing. Um, but the issue is when I try to do that. See, I don't have. I have this corner, and if I move this corner, I come off axes pretty easy, and I have to. Realistically, this is going to get buried inside of this other piece next to it, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, but we're here to learn stuff. So what I might do in this case is I might grab my axes tool and pull a line up this line and click. That way, when I grab this and I hit scale, look like all my lines come right there, and then I can actually grab this and slide it straight up. When I'm done, I can right click on the axes. Oop, missed it. Yes, I come out here where I only have axes. Right here, and I hit reset, and it'll put them back where they were at the beginning. So nice. A little more, a little other, another more you know moment there. <laughs> All right, I have no idea what this geometry is telling me right here, so I'm gonna make some stuff up. Someone says, um, Leo says, model one blade, and use duplicate for the other three. Oh, absolutely. We're only, we're only doing this once. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even worry about it. Yes, absolutely. That this is a perfect situation uh, where I don't I don't want to do this over and over again. I only want to do this one time. So I'm gonna. God, how lazy can you be, really? Oh, I, it gets it could get worse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna grab this right here. Oh no, I'll just do this. At this point. Something like that. And it actually looks like they get a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna grab this line or this line, this line, oh, come on. This Peace line. Whew, third tries a charm, or however many that <laughs> was. Alright, like that. That did not come out straight. That's not right at all. Alright, grab that point, move on to green axes. There we go. And that did cause a break in my geometry here, but that's okay because it's small and I'm willing to alt erase to get rid of it. All right, so that is one rotor. One half of one rotor, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's not quite one yet. Right, so still, grab this. It's still a math percentage. <laughs> I'm gonna pull it out here. I'm gonna flip along the green axes. You know, I just think I've done that so many times in front of people that I'm now self-conscious and believe <laughs> that I'm getting it wrong even though I really should feel good about what I'm doing. You uh, got this. <laughs> Thanks. That's all, I, that's all I needed. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna grab all of this. Bring it right out here. Do a little clean up, get rid of some of these interior faces. There we go, I'm gonna grab all of that. Here, stick it there. Now I can actually get rid of a little bit of geometry. Sweet. I'm gonna triple click and I'm gonna soften, get rid of my redundant stuff, geometry there. I'm gonna grab the whole thing. Oops. Uh oh. This is interesting. This is kind of fun. Um, if I show hidden, my circle disappeared when I hit soften geometry. It seems like one of those, wait, why did that happen? But when you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. I had a circular surface and I had a square surface and they, they connected together with zero angle between the two. So it's actually the perfect geometry to soften. But it was just there for my reference. What I can do is just turn my hidden geometry on and then I can still use rotate to grab the center and go from one, start bringing it around, option key, bring it to 90 degrees, click. X3, and our rotor is coming together. Um, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna pull this up a little bit too far, both directions. And Nathan asks if it would be considered native tools to find some rotors on the 3D warehouse. <laughs> uh, oh. I think so, I think that's pretty clever. It, you know, there is a button right here. All of that, make it a group. 
I'm going to check for native or for uh, solid. I'm gonna no, maybe. Oui, I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna re-soften. All right, that looks pretty sweet. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna use, I gotta flip it back flat. I don't have a whole lot of flat geometry to use to, to rotate this, so I'm just gonna use the move tool and the bounding box to spin that to 90 degrees. We talked about this before, I use the heck out, I really love that tool. I like the, uh, the, uh, the handles, the rotate handles on the move box. All right, I'm gonna grab it by uh, that end point, I'm gonna turn on my hidden geometry and try to find a center line to line up with. They're becoming fewer and farther between. All right, I'll just grab this one right here. Now I know I'm centered horizontally. So now all I have to do is use the, the move tool this direction and this direction. I know that is a grossly oversimplified rotor. I was actually thinking something like that, that would be kind of like, you know, a little machine modeling, but actually get a like a blown up view of how that all works. It'd be it looks similar to what we do with the steam engine, but it might be kind of a fun model. Do some kind of mechanical, hardcore mechanical piece where you find mechanical drawings. That, that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. um, I love it, it looks so great. So, okay, there we go, one more time. I'm gonna save first. <laughs> I'm going to outer shell the two solids together. Pa -pow. Yeah. Pa -pow. All right, we need to put, throw some skids on this thing and we're done. Yeah, I think it basically will fly right off the screen. Yeah. It's Dang. Done. It's capable. There, so, as usual, <laughs> I did have this moment in time where I went, why did I say I'd model a helicopter? I don't know how to model a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> I literally have no, look at all those curves. What am I going to do? What I did not foresee coming either is only using native tools to, uh, to put this thing together. So... I'm gonna go ahead and curse myself right now by saying these skids should be no big deal. <laughs> you have a silent round of applause. All right, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, let's get in here. Let's get these skids on here. Um, skids are, these are fairly simple geometry because what I can do is I'll come over like this so you've got a line kind of like this, and then I will put an arc betwixt the two. <laughs> and that one, that one dropped a little long, so I'm just gonna grab this line and pull it out through there. Get rid of that extra geometry down below. All right, triple click, and make that into, nope, not, it's, I'm gonna go to weld. Which is, yes, the extension I have been using. All right, so obviously not a super amount of detail in here, but I'm fairly certain that skids kind of have like a uh, ovalish shape to them. Um, so I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to bring a circle out like that, and again, I'm going to grab it and use scale push it down like something like that, grab my newly welded line, hit follow me, and pick that shape. Hit it. All right, so that looks, looks, that looks super. Um, it looks like these are pretty much, these look kind of the same thing. They look like they have that, that kind of shape, which I think is intentional because it's a helicopter, it goes through air, so everything probably has like that streamlined shape. But I'm going to assume it's a very similar shape. Um, I'm going to grab that. I'm going to... Um, Robert Coolidge is pointing out that uh, I keep finding that center plane over and over again. It'd be good to make a surface in the middle or a rep. I did. I, I don't know if I had that for a while. I actually had some reference lines marking the middle points. Um, I deleted them so I could use solid tools, but uh, you're absolutely right. If you do have to keep going to that, rather than turning on your hidden geometry and uh, moving 
you know, back over reference lines, you can just get a, sh get a shape in there. In fact, when I had the whole helicopter up against the drawing, I could have done it at that point too. That would have been a smart thing to do. Um, all right, so I need to figure out, I'm gonna grab this, turn this 90 degrees. Grab a <laughs> center point. <laughs> oh. You can find it. There we go. I'm going to slap that right against the drawing. Like that. Um, looks like a prop in like a trendy bar. <laughs> like just, you know, a drawing of something on the wall and then... It's like a deconstructed <laughs> photo of a... And three, actually, what's, what's happening, sculpture. this needs to come down a little bit, it looks like. Closer. All right. Um, I'm going to grab this piece, and I'm going to rotate it out 90 degrees. I'm going to grab it by kind of an arbitrary edge. I just want to figure out where, it, how far out it is. All right. So it's there. Um, I'm going to make this into its own group. And then what I might do, I'm going to use the same, I'm going to use the exact same profile. I'm going to go grab this. Well, first I'm going to hit fix. Uh, I'm going to hit solid inspector because I have that line and then I can see the end of it right here. I'm going to hit fix to get rid of that. So it'll be a solid because I'm sure I'll be using solid tools again. I'm going to grab this shape right here and control C to copy. And I'm gonna hit Command V, whoops, Command V to paste. And I'm just gonna make a piece like that. I'm gonna make that a group. All right, and now I'm going to, let's see, I'm gonna make it vertical. And I wanna turn it this way and grab it by that point and bring it right over here. All right, so exact location, TBD, but I wanna get this on here and I'm gonna use, uh, rotate with the green axes, come out here. So with rotate, what I do a lot is zoom in real tight to get the point I wanna rotate about, but then come out as far as possible when I actually do this rotation for a couple of reasons. One is I, I can grab something, a, a handle and move it easier the other reason is if I come out here, if I come in here, every time I come along a point, it's gonna snap my rotation to that point. If I'm out here past everything, I'm gonna get this nice big even arc of rotation. It's jumping by, what, like less than a degree as I do this. Uh, so just keep it simple. Make it easier on yourself. Um, so I'm gonna rotate this. I'm not in line with the leg on the drawing, but I'm not really looking to be. All I wanna do is get parallel to it. So it looks like right about there. From there, let's try moving it. We'll move it vertically down into the pipe and then we'll scoot it over this way. Something like that. All right, and there is two of them. So I'm gonna temporarily move that one forward. I'm gonna hit option and slide it back. And now I'm gonna grab this, this, and this. Temporarily group them together and then use the move tool and the handles to rotate at 90 degrees. Grab a midpoint. Slide it up against the drawing. And then get that down here over our reference drawing and below. And now I can do my final movements here. Actually, because I'm gonna explode that. That was just my temporary container group. Explode that out, grab this piece, slide it forward. And I can see that these pieces actually, you know, they're not straight. They do kind of move like that. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna grab this piece right here. And I'm just going to move along the red axes. Get that 
top end, wherever it is, and then move it to, so I get uh, a little too much. Sculpting, um, I am hitting the reference lock as I do this too, because uh, after I pick my point I want to move from, I'm hitting reference lock because it is going to try to stay in line with where it's actually at. So I do have to tell it where I want to move it. So I'm going to grab that one, option, copy, move it back like that. Awesome. Yes. All right, take this one. I always save before solid tools. Not that I don't, I don't think I've ever really had a serious problem with solid tools, but it's a habit of mine. All right, now, here's the question. Grab this, grab this, slide it on over. How do, so before I do my intersection here, I want to, I want to copy, get this over onto this side. So I could grab this right now, option, copy, make a copy of it, invert it, but how am I going to get it exactly lined up so it's parallel to the other side? I'm glad I asked. So what I will do is, again, I will create some new geometry that represents the center uh, or a point that I can snap to. So I'm going to go up here to the rotor. I have some real clearly defined geometry right here. See this point right here? Because the, the rotors are at 45 degrees to the face, I know that this point right here is snappable and it's easy to find, so I'm going to draw a line straight up from it. Now I'm going to grab that line and this group that is my skid. I'm going to make a new group. I'm going to copy that group over. I'm going to right click and flip along the green axes. Now I can just grab this, this group by that handle I created, bring it right over here, place it right there. Whoop, nope. Ooh, make sure it points at the right spot. I'll grab by the top. And now I'm assured that that is exactly on the other side. Um, so because the reason it was a bigger deal, too, is because I had this weird geometry going inside, crossing over. So it wasn't as simple as just flip it right along the middle because the bot, this actually crossed past the middle. Um, but by temporarily putting that little line in there, I have an absolute spot I know I can pick from and place to. All right, let's finish this up. I'm going to grab both these groups and explode them once. That way I can get rid of this extra line up here. Both of these should be solid. So one at a time, I will join them with the outer hull. And one more. Whew. And that is a helicopter <laughs> using only native tools in SketchUp. Did it. Wow. Nailed it. One moment. <laughs> All right. Just a little bit um, of that. I didn't know that was gonna work. <laughs> I'll be honest, I was skeptical for some of that. <laughs> Sweet. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, the, we, we came out of that a little ahead of schedule too. Um, so what I might do at this point is, uh, Let's get some windows on here. It has some very, very cool looking windows. Can we paint it too? We could paint it too. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but like I would say four out of five models we do, we get to this point where geometry is done and then we wrap up. And that's, that's never like, it's not because I don't like colorful things. I do like, I mean, I do have to admit, I like this nice clean look of all one color and like the, the lines and it looks nice. From a design standpoint, that's pretty cool. Um, I do like it. It's just that, you know, coloring stuff with a paint bucket's usually pretty simple. So <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't get into it uh, too much. But we will spend a little time uh, throwing windows on this one in particular. Um, so I'm going to do a couple things. So we're going to get these doors in. We're going to put uh, little indents for the doors, um, and we are going to the doors. We're going to use an extension on though. Just, I'm just saying. Well, we, we knew two different ways. One extension, one not so much. But right now, I want to create geometry of these windows that I can intersect with this geometry and cut. 
So I'm going to start by drawing it in 2D. So I'm going to grab a line right here, take it straight up. Same thing here, it looks like this is, so go like that. And then right here we have some going horizontal. Down here we have a thing going this direction. <laughs> a thing, do I mess? A thing, sorry, a line. <laughs> that was not that complex, so I should not have ducked that one. That was actually pretty easy. Oh, I don't like where that was. Oops. Draw another arc. I'm just using regular arcs on this one. I'm not using uh, Beziers. Because native tool. But yeah, I guess I did use Bezier too. Oh man, yeah. liar! God. All right. And then what I'm going to do with each of these shapes is I'm going to make a face. And then when I'm done, I'll take those faces and run them right through here and not use solid tools to cut them out. I don't want to pull the geometry out. I just want to use intersect faces to cut the surface of the helicopter. Um, this one's going to be a little, a little funky. I'm going to start with lines like this first, and then I'm going to come back in and uh, draw arcs here to round these corners. Oh man, there we go. I don't, know, I don't know what I did right there. All right. And one more. This think, is a weird um, shape. People are arguing over whether or not you uh, needed to use math to do this and somebody is uh, remembering Leo is remembering that you used a lot of math when you modeled retro furniture. And I just wanted to see how you thought about that. Hmm, about that. math. I do recall math. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I generally try to stay away from having to do actual, you know, times four, because <laughs> they made four rotors. That was kind of a math thing. That was multi multiplication. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I. Uh, anyway, you guys remember? Just saying, we're gi there? giving you some throwback credit. Oh, thanks, guys. So just say you did math. Cool. <laughs> did it. Done. A series of arcs here. All right. Um, I'm going to clean up. This is a little bit sharp here, so I'm just going to lop it off like that, kind of. All right, and before, I'm going to grab these two in particular, and I'm going to uh, weld. I'm going to use my not, a, not an extension extension. Same thing over here. <laughs> weld. I'm not too worried here. These will be, these are hard breaks on these curves, but these ones I actually don't want a whole bunch of uh, breaks in the intersection. So I'm going to take them now. I'm just going to drag them right through the body of the helicopter. Oh, hey, Mark. And now I'm going to come in here and let's do it like this. I'm going to grab this surface right here. So not the whole model. When you grab, uh, or I'm not the whole group, when you grab a group and you say intersect, what it'll end up doing is it'll put lines where the intersections happen, but it'll happen on the outside of the group itself. So you end up with a bunch of geometry basically stuck to the outside of the group. If I actually come into the model like this and I select the surface, now I can right click and say intersect face with model. With model says any place this face intersects anything in the entire model, it's gonna get broken. If I was to say context, it would say only what's in the group. Since I turned off everything that's not in the group right now, that means it's not going to intersect with anything. 
So I'm gonna say with model, and what should happen, it's gonna take a second, but then I should, boom, look at that. Boom. Faces show up. <laughs> um, got a little, little issue right here. Fixed. All right, look at that, that's super sick. Um, oh, it's great. If I come out here, the I one thing, it. ah! <laughs> Dang, well, that that's why your copter amazing. won't fly. All right. Um, the yeah. one issue we're missing right now is right here. There is additional geometry, um, but I'm gonna do that much the same way, but I'm gonna not bother with this. I'm just gonna come up here. I'm gonna draw a line down the center, and then I'm just gonna create something like this. Grab that geometry, flip it 180 degrees. I, all right, I'm gonna type 180. I'm not sure why it's not snapping at the surface there. <laughs> it's like, so you think you're done, huh? All right, grab that, bring that out here, rotate it. And now I'm gonna line that up with a middle point again. We'll use that same middle point we used before. Pull it forward. And now vertically, I want to line it up where this section laps into this section. So I'm going to grab it here. I'm going to restrain it to vertical and just pick any midpoint on here. All right, that looks good. I may have to pull this line down just a touch. All right, and I'm going to grab that and pull that through the whole thing again. I only want to go, well, let's see, how far do I want to go? I want to go this far. All right. And now I can go again into the model, but I'm only going to intersect. Oh, what's this? Ooh. Uh, Not sure uh, how, but I got a couple lines that got unsoftened in the nose. All right, now I can select this surface right here, and I will say again, just like I did before, intersect with model. I should just get my brakes right there. I'll come up here to these two, intersect with model, intersect with model, and then last, finally, I can come in here with my modifier, my soften, uh, key and selectively get rid of these lines right here. Should be saying boom a lot. Boom, boom, boom. Everybody boom, boom, boom. Boom. Uh oh, one more boom. Baby boom. <laughs> Add some booming down here. Oh, this is looking good. All right, with that, oh, that's hella cool. All right, I'm gonna hella. go. <laughs> oh, didn't even think about it. All right, I'm gonna go throw some just black on the windows. I'm gonna put a sick paint job on here because I'm gonna go grab some SketchUp Red. Boom. I'm gonna throw that in this landing gear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, man. Stealth. Throw this back here. Make it spinny and turn all red and bright and stuff. We'll it's not, red a, it's not a very um, in, inconspicuous helicopter. No. Well, I mean, did you see what Magnum PI flew around in? Well, and what, that's the bright true. oranges. <laughs> it's not like um, if you're flying it, you're sneaking around. It's kind of loud. Odds are, yeah, odds yeah. are good. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we should get. I oh, I know what we need here. All right, we need to go grab. So I wonder if I have this. Uh, <laughs> there it is. I'm gonna drop that uh -oh. <laughs> SU logo in. Kind of 
of fun if we could put Matt in the driver's seat. <laughs> Pilot seat. Pilot seat. Frog Excuse thingy. me. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take this and explode it, which will make it a texture. I'm going to uh, select that texture. I'm going to make sure it's projected. And I'm going to come in here, grab these surfaces. Oops. That could have gone better. All right, let me make a change. <laughs> no, I know. The, so the problem here is this. Currently, it's a very small PNG. I'm going to go too big. This is a too small PNG with a uh, woo. All right. So what I'm going to do is just modify my texture real quick. here. There we go. Combine those textures together. And now I'll take that texture, change to projected, Now I can say um, grab one of these surfaces. Where's my logo? Whew, too big, too way up there. Oh, it's gonna be a sweet wrap. <laughs> I'm gonna ride Matt. Left button, mouse butt, right butt. Oh, oh. it's all falling apart. <laughs> Projected. There we go. Yeah. Red blades. Needs red blades. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's, that's going to work right there. So, the official SketchUp helicopter is now a thing. Boom. We just need to build a, a landing pad into our, That's right. our office now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we did it, guys. We really did it. And it's solid, too. So, uh, you know, one could uh, print it or do what one likes with that. <gasps> Maybe. Cool. So I love it. That's nice where job. we got to. And 90%, I'm gonna say 95% negative tool or negative tools. <laughs> native tools. 95 native that, oh. Pause. Third time to Rewind, try. restart. <laughs> 95 or so percent native tools. We did use weld. We did use Bezier curve. Um, both are free extensions. Um, I could have gotten away without weld, to be honest. I use weld just to make it easier so there's less cleanup. You could have done everything that we did without weld. That would have totally been possible. Um, you could have done it mostly without Bezier curves too. Um, you would have just probably been doing series of curves, like kind of like what I did on, on this window, rather than uh, you know doing fewer arcs because you can control with a Bezier. So, I will, I will say that this probably could have been done 100% with native tools if, if someone wanted to. Um, Heck yeah. 
No, Colin, nobody mentioned that the sound was a little low, but we could turn it up as we say goodbye. So, so if that helps. <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe Colin just needs to turn his Yeah, his maybe up. he can turn. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I just blew out somebody with a... <laughs> 3D print it. Um, all right, so I will be... Tell you what, better than that. I will save this, and I will throw it up as I try to do generally. Um, I'll get it up on 3D Warehouse, and you guys can go up and grab it and 3D print it yourself and post a picture of your 3D print to the forum in that, uh, that, that section, that topic we just started. That would be awesome. Yeah, guys. Um, or, we'll like it. I said, grab it and uh, fire up MS Physics and make it spin, make it fly. That would be cool, too. Go, if you go do that, then uh, I will give you a proper shout out. We'll show your work right here next week when we come back. I'm only giving you a week. I have a short attention span. I won't remember about this after a week. Um, but yeah, go, go do that. It'll be awesome. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Leo. That's your challenge. Yeah. You, Leo Vlad, are responsible for spinning <laughs> those plates. <laughs> ENT is on it. Yeah. Ian's going to spin the rotors. Let's see it. All right, so. That pretty much wraps it. I mean, that, that's uh, I really don't know a whole lot more we could do without getting to a level of detail that we don't really want to go to at this point. So I want to ask at this point, uh, what else you guys want to see? Not today, in general. So we have a little discussion now. Um, one of the things that we were brainstorming was some, some sort of uh, like classic architecture, like Roman, temple architecture, columns and reliefs and that kind of stuff. Something like that would be cool. Parthenon type stuff. Um, Apollo 11, that, that could be fun too. Um, but uh, we'd love to, to hear some more ideas. What, what I'd like to do is to try to get a calendar built out so we can go, oh yeah, we're going to do that in two weeks. Come back then. Or kind of give you guys an idea of what's upcoming. We generally kind of just make this stuff up on Monday, we go look at the list and go, here's a thing to do. <laughs> but I'd love to hear what you guys want most, most of all. So uh, yeah, hit me with, with those ideas. A car with interiors. Make it hard. Agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We want to see Aaron suffer. That's usually not a problem. <laughs> um, I like the idea of doing cars or doing interiors of vehicles. Um, but in the three hour time, or time period we have here, that can be a little much. So actually maybe doing the interior to a car would be a, an idea too. Greek Orthodox Church could be kind of cool. Some, like I said, classic architecture would be a, a lot of fun. Um, Mezco, a movie I set. did not use Sub-D for the body. This body was created completely with native tools. So we kind of have some of the processes over here in the junkyard, but uh, you will be able to watch this, this video in its entirety and see how we did it. Uh, following this. The Pantheon. See, that'd be cool. Oh, Frankenstein's lab. Now, yeah. you're, now you're talking to me. I like that too. That's <laughs> that really could be a fun it's one. A great idea. All right. So we, we, I'm going to put that on the short list. Um, Neil Armstrong's suit. That would be awesome. I will be honest. Cloth, while totally doable, <laughs> is not enjoyable. <laughs> um, what do we say about suffering? There, yeah. That's maybe a little much. <laughs> that's like blood on the keyboard kind of suffering. Um, no, cloth is totally doable. You can do it with seeing things uh, like um, subdivision or artisan type tools. You can do to create folds and cloth. And there is cloth works where you create tools where if you want to make like an arm of a, a, of a shirt, you could actually create it as a cylinder and then use uh, cloth works to kind of let it wrinkle and that kind of stuff. So that's totally all possible. Um, but honestly, it's probably not the ideal workflow <laughs> for SketchUp. Uh, heavy cloth stuff, just not not uh, not ideal. Baroque architecture. Ooh. That would be fun too. Yes. Um, <laughs> scatter. Yeah. The, you know, maybe maybe we'll try to do something like that. Maybe we'll do some architecture and then scatter some vegetation around. That could be kind of fun. Scatter's a very cool extension, a lot of fun to work with, especially if you're heading off into uh, rendering eventually. And you know, I, again, I'll just, we'll keep saying it. 
Rendering's awesome. I'm not necessarily an expert at rendering, and it's not always that exciting to watch. <laughs> so if you're going for a high-end render, you know, it's more one of those things you do when you're, before you go to lunch, or, you know, maybe it, it, at the end of the day. So um, it's not to say we will never do rendering on this. I'm not saying that. There's actually some, you know, uh, some of those renders with live rendering are getting better and better, getting higher and higher quality in shorter and shorter times. So it's totally something we could do, um, but it's probably not going to be on the short list. I'm not going to promise it in the next month. I'll say that. Model your laptop. That would actually be kind of a fun one. There's, there's actually a lot of detail that uh, lends itself well to SketchUp modeling in a, a MacBook. Um, make Aaron suffer. Awesome. <laughs> Only extensions in math. No native tool. There we go. <laughs> Outdoor setting. That would be cool too. Bauhaus architecture. Yeah, love that one. I'm going back to classic. I, I, I <laughs> it's not a no. That could happen. Yeah, I, I would really like, we've done a lot of different things here, but we've done vehicles and characters recently. It would be cool to go back to some, some kind of architecture next time. So I may uh, slide those up towards the top. Um, but yeah, landscape would be kind of fun too. We did a thing on kind of general landscape before, but it would be fun to come up with a specific landscape we're shooting for and, and do something like that. And Gamborg comes in with the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> that would be a fun one, too. Sydney Opera House. You know, I did model a, uh, a, a 3D model of hops, like, you know, they use in beer. And it had kind of the same. It had, like, these kind of domey shapes that lapped over each other. Right. And it was, uh, it was something. Could have been. Was... been either. It was a lot, yeah, it, it actually didn't, it looked probably more like the Sydney Opera House than actual hops when I was done. But uh, yeah, it's, that's definitely one you'd want to use some extensions on though. I'll say that. Um, I don't know what an Eichler home is. Uh, isn't he an architect? Probably. I'm not a classically trained architect, in case you guys were wondering. <laughs> Building design, yes. Uh, Marconi, nope, absolutely not ignoring you. Um, uh, I did hear a request for um, uh, dynamic components. Um, I, I don't, I, I kind of have a very narrow understanding of dynamic components. If I stay in that little tiny spot, I can do them, but I don't know. We'll see. If we get a lot of feedback saying people want to see it, we could do that. Um, but it's, it's not the most exciting thing to watch, to be totally honest. <laughs> to spend an hour and a half or three hours doing dynamic components. We, we'll put it on list. We'll absolutely put it on list. Uh, we'll see, though. Guggenheim Museum. Oh, yeah. Earthbag House. Wait, Red Sea? I just did a helicopter, man. Why are you on a plane? Come on. <laughs> Isn't that good enough? I've done a flying car and a helicopter. Um, actually, I will say this, though. I did uh, a Learjet and used sub D and the whole thing, I think it was about, it was less than an hour for the whole thing. It was pretty, it was pretty cool. It was not, not too difficult to model. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, I, this is awesome guys. Thank you so much for all these ideas. We're, we're going to run back through all these comments and, and take lots of notes of them because there's some some great stuff in here. I think you guys did it. I think you gave us ideas for Stonehenge. <laughs> 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 Organic <laughs> modeling. <laughs> we have to use the, uh, what is it, Enerot's, uh, which is a decimation tool, which is basically takes everything, breaks into smaller pieces, and rather sub smoothing out like Sub-D does, it randomly shifts the points. So it actually makes stuff, the fra fractal, I can't remember what it is, but it actually just takes that geometry and rather than make it smooth, it makes it like crunchy and makes really cool looking rocks. Oh, that's cool. Uh, very cool extension. A steam locomotive would be cool. So we made that little steam engine, uh, like literally like engine, there's a miniature steam engine, but I think a full size locomotive would be a very fun one too. Uh, falling waterfall, that would be, that would be a fun one. Uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright. 
back to back Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright requests. I mean, um, it's a pretty good one. Yeah. Any of his stuff would be. Art good. installation, a space scene, moon surface with Earth in the background. Ooh. Terrain eroder. Thank you, Keenan. That's that's what it was. Uh, terrain eroder, which is very cool. If you guys do any kind of rocks or anything like that, it's worth checking out because it's super easy too. You basically create a piece of geometry and hit erode, and it goes and it makes it all crunchy and cool. So yeah, check it out. Awesome. Well, hey, I appreciate all that. And uh, as always, so much appreciate you guys coming out, hanging out with us. Um, it still blows me away how many people come here, what time of day, night it is in some of your guys' locations. That's awesome. Um, I don't know that I'd turn me on and watch me at 7 o'clock at night, but the fact that you do means a lot. <laughs> so thank you all so much for hanging out. And thank you for, you know, a, we kind of watch the numbers they come through and we're always blown away at how many people stick around for so much of this it's it really is very cool and how engaging i mean this would be well it would just be a video if you guys weren't here i would just be when well i already do that you guys have seen that <laughs> and I, i'm not going to sit and do that alone for three hours that's for sure um <laughs> but yeah thank you so much for coming and hanging out oh yep it's Twenty-three fifty-four, so just shy of midnight in Romania. That is awesome. A car engine, that would be cool. A Corvette. Da Vinci's plane. Ooh, I'm a I'm a sucker for Da Vinci. I gotta be honest. I, the man was awesome. Um, but that would be cool. Maybe a little bit of cloth, some wood, that kind of stuff. Um, all right, but yeah, so we're going to. Uh, hop out of here if you don't have notifications turned on for whatever channel you're watching uh, go ahead and turn them on because we do do these every single week uh, every friday unless something's going on prevents us from go doing it we will be here modeling live so turn on notifications on youtube uh, follow us on facebook uh, hang out with us on, on twitch and uh, you'll get notified next time we do this live um, should be around noon mountain time next friday but uh, yeah, come by. We love love seeing you, and uh, thank you for yeah. And I didn't get shot this time. That's so that's a plus for me. Anyhow, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, anyhow, yeah. Thank you so much. You guys have an awesome weekend. Have an awesome week next week, and uh, hopefully you can. Uh, we'll come by. And we'll see you again. Um, all right. While we fade, while we fade out, I'm not. We're not going to kill it right now. But we'll leave the stream running. If you guys do have more ideas, go ahead and throw it up there. Um, Marconi, I will show you, is by request. This is a personal thing, this is not, um, <laughs> but one of the models I'm working on in my free time <laughs> is modeling uh, the Lego kit for the Millennium Falcon. This is the big, whatever, 8,700 piece Millennium Falcon. So I decided I'm never gonna own a Lego kit for like an $800 Legos, uh, it's, that's, that's a lot. But it's a sweet looking kit. So I decided it would be fun to model all the pieces and put it together in SketchUp. So I got that going on. So that's something and we can check in. Free on. time, y'all. Yeah, free time. This is this is uh I like to have a model going for like lunch times and weekend mornings, that kind of stuff. I do a little morning rendering with a cup of coffee. Um, I do this, yeah, while I'm eating lunch, that kind of thing. But uh, it's good. It keeps everything polished. Because <laughs> honestly, the only other time I really model is here on Fridays. So um, sometimes I'll throw a model together to make a video, but other than that, like like straight up just creating something from scratch doesn't. I don't get to do it as often. You guys got it made. You get to use it for work. That sounds weird considering where I work, <laughs> but <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, so yeah. So uh, thank you guys so much for for coming by, and uh, like I said, we will. We'll be seeing you next week. I will throw this model up on 3D Warehouse so you can grab it if you like. Uh, otherwise, have a great week, have a great weekend, and we will see you then. Bye-bye.